Joe, who we spoke about from uh, the Netherlands, and Kuhn Martens from Belgium. So we'll see how this uh, breaks down, the two favorites on the day. Yeah, well, let's take a closer look at our judges. I think they have just arrived. Uh, maybe we can go directly onto the field of play. I'm not sure. Yes, I think we can. Hopefully you can see them arriving now. Here come Bart Janssen, our stage judge. And his son Schul Janssen will be the video judge, uh, which I think uh, gets to be a more and more important role, Troy, in uh, timber sports. Yeah, Schul Janssen in competition control is uh, where they keep an eye on everything that's happening on stage via video cameras. So it's a very important role that he has there because uh, in order to be fair for these athletes on stage, they have to have everything really, I mean, you know, one judge or two judges on stage can often make a small mistake. It's nothing against the judges. It's just human nature. But the video judge has a very important role. He has to go back through the milliseconds sometimes of a start that... And there's so many close early. calls, yeah. And there's very many close calls. We've seen it in almost every single event we've had this year so far. And uh, it's been competition control that's made the big difference. And they really, they look at it like next to next and super close to each other so yeah it's and also from, from 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 the athletes view i think it's perfect because you know everything is going to be decided on a very very fair basis exactly yeah, yeah exactly and uh, the big thing everybody is fighting for that's the trophies from today and we're going to take a closer look at the trophies right now oh yeah look at them nice don't mind having one of those in my living room yeah we have to do a little bit of work to practice our axe <laughs> swings and saw cuts first, though. Well, yeah, <laughs> me probably hit a very little more than you, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's how it's going to work today. That that's the trophies that everybody is going to be fighting for. Awesome pictures from the Steel Timber Sports Benelux Championships 2019 as we are getting ready for the Benelux Championships 2020. So let's take a closer look at the format. Three rounds of excitement coming up right now. So try Three rounds uh, to be competed. We're going to start off with 14 athletes. They and normally we've got 12 out there, but today it's 14, 7, and 7. So. And they will be reduced uh, for the second round to 8. Mm -hmm. And then the final round, only uh. 6 athletes are going to be competing for the big title. 
In round two, we'll also see a first round underhand chop, stock saw, standing block chop. And then round two, you see there single buck and springboard. Uh, and as you mentioned, reducing it down to six athletes. And then it's something unusual for the hot saw. It's the decider discipline, but it's also normally a single hot saw participant on stage. Not but today. this time, not today. Not today. It's going to be head to head. So uh, uh -huh. that's going to be fun and loud. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always really, really enjoy that. And I uh, have to say, it's going to be a hot so tonight yes and they're gonna need it the weather is not that perfect uh, so uh, i think to heat things up is no mistake at all nate it's gonna it's gonna definitely be uh, helpful a uh, little bit of uh, rain happening there but uh, these guys i don't think it's gonna affect them at all they're gonna be fully concentrated and ready for action so we've met the athletes uh, it's time to meet the discipline number one ladies and gentlemen get ready for the tool and the discipline Underhand Chop In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes cut through a 32 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around 3 kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. I like that you could shave with that blade. Oh, wow. Uh, let's take a look at the first seven heats. It's going to be Florent van Remdonk taking on Francois Ramgrets. Ah, oh, those pronunciations are, are going to kill me. Tonight. They're already getting on us, eh? <laughs> yeah. uh, in heat number two, Arnaud Grutzmet uh, will take on Bert Berners. Then we're going to have uh, Robin Cuvelier and uh, Eugene Gerders. Uh, we're going to have uh, Redmer Knoll and Edwin Dost. Martin Cuvillier and Elko de Bear, uh, then Ben Terpstra and Martin Harms, and a final heat is going to be Kuhn Martins and Rick van Deel, and that's going to be a really big one. That's going to be a good one, and we've seen them battle each other before in the in the past, and uh, I mean, there's uh, it's going to be a good heat, I think. Yeah, It'll really looking forward to it. Can't wait for this one. <laughs> So, our 68-year-old, Florent van Remdonk, coming out on the stage. And something that uh, we can all aspire to be when we're 68 years old is that fit. Unbelievable and uh, just fantastic. Now, coming out, Francois Lambre Lambrecht. Heat number one. And now we're going to get our action underway. I'm really looking forward to this. And remember those axes, three kilograms, 80 centimeters long. And you can see their personal best there. They're not that far apart in age, 55 and 68. No, 67 is listed there, but our sheets say 68. A couple of practice swings for Florent van Leemdonk. Really important here is to make sure that you get some uh, nice big slabs coming out of those blocks on the underhand chop. Try and get over to the other side as quickly and safely as possible. And, uh, of course, no early starts before the gun goes. So here we go with our first heat of the day. Okay. Our granddaddy caddy on the left-hand side there in stand A. And Lambrex on stand B on the right-hand side. Here we go. All right, so nice and even so far as these two get through that first side on their block. Who's going to be turning to the other side? It is Lambrechts moving to the other side first. Van Remdok trying to go a bit deep on his side, gets that axe caught in twice now, and that's going to cause him to slow down the time. Lambrechts looking good, number six there on his leg, and uh, 
Van Reemdok just had to step off his log as he lost his balance a little bit. Passing the 45 second mark now, and it looks like it's going to be Lambrecht going to break through that log first in a time of 49.75. That's a personal best for him. And at the moment, he'll take over first place as we can hear the heavy breathing there, working that ax to try and get through that block. A couple more blows should do it for Van Reemdonk. A little skip of the axe. Got to be real careful there. And there we go. Breaks through in a time of 114.18. And that's a personal best as well for him. So there we have it. Our first heat is done and dusted. And we now have our first set of scores coming into the block. So Francois Lambrex with 12 points, having the fastest time so far. And we'll take a look back during the slow-mos really quickly. It was Lambrex who was first to get over to the other side to start working on the backside of his block. You can see this is the front side. Big slabs coming off of Lambrex's block. A great job by both of these gentlemen to get our competition started here with the underhand chop. And there you see the final blow, blow from Francois Lambrex. And there we look at the underhand chop as our first two competitors. By default, we'll go one and two with two personal bests happening in that heat. Very nice. And then we'll move on to our next heat as our crew gets the stage ready for our next two competitors, which will be Arnaud Gutzmit and Bert Berners. Bart Janssen, center stage there, keeping a close eye on everything as our uh, stage judge. Blocks are ready, and the guys were real quick to get that stage cleaned up nicely. All right, heat number two coming out onto the stage. Arnold Goldschmidt and Bert Berners. Running through the Belgian contingent to start things off for the day. Stand A in heat number two will be Arnaud Goldschmidt. And stand B will be Bert Berners. Goldschmidt looking pretty relaxed as... He gets up on his block, doesn't seem too stressed at all. A lot of this is mental preparation for these guys. We'll talk a little bit about that later on during the competition as well. And you can see an aspect of the mental preparation is those first few practice swings to make sure that you get your targeting on point. All right, here we go, heat number two, ready to go. Athletes ready, stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So personal bests here, 105 for Gutschmidt, 57.93 for Berners. Uh, to take the lead in the competition, they need to beat 49.51. Gutschmidt right in front of you here on screen, far side is Berners. Both of them looking good. Gutschmidt is the first to move over to the other side. Could we see a personal best for him? He's got to beat his time of 10593 and he is looking very well on the way to doing that as he is the first one to move over to the other side now Gutschmidt or Bernas has moved over to the other side on his Gutschmidt is well ahead in this one he's got a good piece of wood there just passing the 50 second mark Oh, a big axe stick there by Gutschmidt as he gets past the 104. So no personal best for him today, I don't believe. No, it's not going to happen. But it should be one, two more hits as he steps off, gets back up. Oh, he's having a little bit of trouble. That axe is getting caught deep down low on that block. He's not allowed to swing that axe without his feet both being up on top there. Vernez on the far side 
similarly struggling as he has a quick skip there and has to step down big time forward. And time limit is exceeded for Gutschmidt and Berner is with a 125.30, although I think his time limit also was exceeded there. So we'll have to double check that. And uh, a little bit of that, oh, that grimace smile, uh, not really satisfied with the performance there today. So both of these guys, I'm just looking at uh, Bernd Bernas with a time of 129.56 and Arno Gutschmidt with a DQ, but we'll have to take a look back here as you see those incredibly sharp tools that they're using. And you can see right there, they're oiling the axe head so that they don't get stuck in there on those first few blows as they slab out some pieces. But uh, it's really important to make sure that your angle is just right and that uh, you have the right amount of power to slab those things out a bit, but you don't put too much down so that the axe gets caught in there, just like that situation right there for Gutschmidt. And again, that axe gets caught in there. Some big, long hits from way on high, and you can see a huge slab comes off right there. And unfortunately... There was, ah, now my screen has just been updated here as well. Both of them have gone over time. So that means we have two DQs and uh, that's something that makes this competition very interesting. And there you see that block is finally broken up and uh, they come down and yeah. So a couple of DQs because of time limit being exceeded. And Marcus, I mean, we talked about it right off the hop. Anything can happen, and we've just witnessed that. Absolutely. What an exciting start uh, into this competition with two personal bests and two DQs. So like you said, anything and everything is possible in this competition, and uh, yeah. it's going to stay very exciting. Now our crew will take care of the stage now to make sure that everything is ready to go. We've got to get all that extra wood that's been chopped and slabbed away from those blocks cleaned off. Uh, and then put new blocks up there for them. But, uh, I mean, we saw in that, uh, in that first heat uh, with uh, Francois Lambrecht and Florian van Remdok, uh, both of them had yeah, pretty respectable times. Uh, Florian uh, van Remdok with, with 68 years old, a time of 1.14.01, a personal best. And uh, Francois Lambrecht's uh, time of 49.51. That's the time to beat at the moment. So both of those guys, personal best. Um, and uh, the other two guys, unfortunately, DQ'd because of time limit exceeded. Now, the reason why they do this is uh, because you could spend five, uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes up there chopping that log through. They have to set a time limit in order for there to be enough time to set up everything afterwards and also because we know that there is a certain amount of time that that block should be cut through on so that's why those time limits are set up and it's interesting to note that not we're not usually seeing those time limits broken and that happened here um in in uh, in the process of having two guys dq'd in this first heat, in, or the first set of heats in the first round, it makes it really interesting going through the rest. But what I can imagine, they get more and more exhausting uh, while you're, you're hitting, and, and at, at some stage, it's just done. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So, so it, it does make sense to set a time limit. Yeah, and that time limit is very important also for the safety of the athletes, just like you mentioned. You know, when you're swinging that three kilo axe and it's getting tiring, your hands start to lose grip, you get that pump in your arms, climbers often get that, uh, and then you just can't hold on anymore. And you can imagine one big swing oops, the axe is flying out. And I mean, luckily in this situation, you know, there's no audience there. Uh, and so it wouldn't matter. But still, uh, the, the worst thing that could happen is something, you know, um, happens like an axe just unforeseen comes out of the hands or a weak hit and you chop your leg or something. I mean, the guys wear protective mesh socks and everything, but still, the time limit is also a safety matter here. Too. But no weak hits on, on the floor on Van Ramdog. No. I mean, I mean, Getting a personal best at the age of 68. Yeah, that's awesome. I Respect, mean, yeah. kudos to him for sure. There's, there's no doubt about it. That, uh, Absolutely fantastic. That's uh, definitely uh, something to aspire to. I'm just uh, completely impressed by that. Fantastic. And a big number of athletes we're going to get to see uh, this autumn. This is going to be a very hot autumn. Uh, we're going to give you all the dates of the upcoming events uh, soon. But as I can see, the next heat is already getting ready. So, Troy, back to you. Wow, they were fast. <laughs> Okay, heat number three is already on stage, and we have Robin Cuvillier against Eugen Gerdes. I, 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 well I, said, I, yeah. Did I get it right? Yeah, I think so. 
couple of good personal bests there, uh, under 38 seconds. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. And you can see in the background there that weather, just not optimal for, uh, you know, the situation. So hopefully these guys can heat it up a bit in heat number three in the underhand chop. Here we go. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Robin Cuvillier on the left-hand side of your screen. Eugen Kredis on the right side. Both of them with times personal bests of under 40 seconds. And uh, with the moisture in the air today, how will that affect the wood? You can see the blocks are a little bit wet. That makes them a bit sticky in, in some cases. And... Uh, makes it harder to get through. So because of that, we're not probably going to see some really, really fast times on these blocks today. But Cuvillier right there slapping out some nice big pieces as our camera tries to readjust position to find the best angle. And they uh, both got over to the other side fairly quickly. Two evenly matched athletes here on this underhand chop. And it looks like it's going to be, oh, very close. And it's uh, Cuvillier. First place with a 47.03. He's beat the fast time of the day. And a 52.72 for Jerez. So now we have uh, a change in the lead in the underhand chop. Robin Cuvillier is now taking those 12 points with the fastest time of 46.72. That's been adjusted. And Francois Lambrex will stay in second place with a 49.51, or moves down to second place, excuse me, with a 49.51. And Eugen Gerdes is sitting in third place with a 52.37 as we take a look at some of those nice hits there. Really precise hits. Maybe not that one so much, but uh, we can see the rain in the background. And uh, a couple of times there you saw the, the edges of the logs were very wet as well. So that's something that's going to play a role for the grip that these guys have on top on those two cut plates where they have to stand. And of course the rule dictates that you have to cut through from both sides of the log. So you have to be careful with that axe in your hand from when you switch from your backside to your front side. And, and here we see both of them working on their backside log blocks. So respectable times, not personal bests here for both of them, but uh, we've got a bit of a change in the overall lead, and we'll take a look at that once we see our leaderboard. Remember, the top guy in this discipline will get 12 points, second place 11, then 10, and so on and so forth. And we see here, underhand chop now. We've got a bit of a switch around, so... Cuvillier in top spot with a time of 46.72. Lambrex uh, moves down into second place with his 49.51. And Gerdes sits now in third place with his 52.37. With Van Remdonk moving down to fourth place with a 114.01. 27 seconds off pace there. So, uh, so far so good. A couple of personal bests. A couple of shifts in the overall standings and in the... Underhand chop standings, and we're moving on to heat number four coming out onto stage here. So our first athlete heading out will be Redmer Knoll. And if you notice, if you pay attention closely to the forearms of a lot of these guys, they're like Popeye forearms. Now Redmer Knoll definitely there. And uh, now coming out is Edwin Dost. Red McNall at 27 years old, one of the younger guys out there going up against 41-year-old Edwin Dost. Now Edwin Dost, we could say he has less a set of forearms than uh, Redmer does, but he's got long arms. He's a tall guy, so let's see if uh, these two guys can make an exciting battle here in heat number four in the underhand chop. These precision axes, they want to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect with them. Here we go. Okay. 
Stand to your timber. Three, two, one. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one. Go. Couple of good personal bests here, by the way. Edwin Dost has the faster of the two at 32.18. So I would say advantage goes to him. But Red McNoll, yeah, being the younger of the two men, might have a little bit more energy as he gets his axe caught in there now twice. And that's going to cause a little bit of time. But he's over to the other side very quickly. So Edwin Dost looking good. Red McNoll still on the backside of his block, or excuse me, other way around. Now, finally moves over. Edwin Dost moves over to the other side of his block. Red Knoll looking very good as he works the front side. And he gets through in a 33.77. And that's a personal best of the fastest time of the day. Well done for Red Knoll. Edwin Dost still trying to work through his... Gets a big stick there, though. Unfortunately, that axe gets caught in. And, yeah, he has just gone well past his personal best there as he tries to get through this block of wood. Another big catch for him. And you could see him talking to that log and hear him talking to that log as he wants to get through there. And he's got to be careful that he doesn't go past the time. Oh, I see it wiggling a little bit. One more hit should do it. Two, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Oh, just a hair is holding that thing on. My goodness, 116.82. That is a disappointing time for Edwin Dost, who we have seen with the best time of 32.18. Uh, absolutely not his day today. And a personal best for Red Knoll, who takes over the top spot in our underhand chop with a time of 33.53. So another personal best falls by the wayside, and uh, Red Knoll is our new leader. All right, and now I've just been also informed that stand four, that would be the stand of Edwin Dost, has been DQ'd for a cut into the foothold. Now maybe we'll be able to get a view of that particular situation. Uh, it's very important that the footholds do not get contacted by the axe. This is a safety issue as well as making sure that these guys are precise with their hits. And uh, if the foothold does get cut, then it is considered a DQ. And there we see Red Knoll with his great time of 33.53. And uh, there we see Bart Janssen pointing out the section where the foothold did actually get cut through by the axe. So that is considered a disqualification. An unfortunate situation for Edwin Dost. His time was quite long, but he still could have taken away a few points there. But now he will not receive any points because of a DQ. So now we've had three disqualifications so far on the day and a new leader in underhand chop in Red Knoll. And uh, a great time of 33.53 is the new time to beat for our next heat coming up. That's heat number five with Martin Cuvillier and El Codabir. Yes, and I've heard, uh, Troy, that Davy van der Aar is already on site uh, with our first interview partner, so uh, let's go directly back to the stage. Of our uh, stage judge, Bart Janssen, and I'm uh, very happy to be here, very, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here, I'm looking forward to some nice conversations. And I'm looking forward to some nice conversations with these wonderful athletes. And here, a personal best time for Redmond Knoll from the Netherlands. Are you very happy with uh, this new time? It was a match. Right. Can you talk a little bit to the mic, please? <laughs> sure. Okay. It was a little bit of a messy cut, but yeah. uh, can do better, but still happy with the time. Yes, yes, of yeah. course. But you did a really nice turn, and uh, I saw yeah, everything, the, the axe went smooth into the wood. Yeah, that's what I train on. So, I'm, I'm pretty uh, excited about it. All right. But we can do better. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, but you have a personal best time, so I think that's uh, magnificent. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I know. All right, okay. <laughs> Next uh, discipline. So, uh, did you have enough time to train for this competition during COVID-19? Yeah, I got plenty of time, but not much competition, so that's the best training competitions. So. Okay, yeah. 
And, yeah. maybe, and maybe the weather, yeah, it's, it's uh, raining cats and yeah, dogs <laughs> and 14 <laughs> degrees. I'm used to it. <laughs> are, are you are used to it? Yeah, yeah. Because you're working in the woods and in the gardens. Yeah, or yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. All right. Okay, uh, thanks for this uh, short interview and uh, good luck with the following disciplines. Yeah, thank you. All right. Good, and you know what they say, guys. Uh, a competition without expert commentary is like a pub without beer. Back to you, guys. Thanks very much, David. A rapper, Knoll. This guy is a cool dude. <laughs> yeah, it's a personal best. But I can do better, and, and I, I trust him because it, it wasn't the cleanest of cuts. Uh, and Troy, you're gonna uh, explain a little later, but uh, he actually can do better, can't he? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw a personal best fall there, and uh, you know that the the more the athletes uh, learn a little bit more about uh, you know different training techniques and everything, um, exercises and stretches and everything, because we know now that uh, being flexible is also just as, if not more, important than being powerful. Um, and so that flexibility and that power combined with the accuracy and these guys are really stepping up their game. I mean, and he's just getting... missing the competition. I well, mean, he's yeah. been practicing perfectly. We, we had the chance to talk to him and his team before. Yeah. And I think this guy is, you know, doing the right things, but yeah. he needs the competition like in any other sport as well, you know. Yeah, that's the only way that you're going to learn how to deal with the stress. And I mean, obviously, he did a, a great job dealing with the stress. And uh, yeah, and we'll see how the next uh, pairing does uh, against the stress of each other as yeah. well. Let's go to the next. Next heat. All right, Martin Cuvillier up against Elko de Beer. This heat lined up and ready to go. There we see on the left hand side, he'll be on stand A. Martin Cuvillier, personal best 3170, 386 for Elko de Beer. Also, a couple of really good times here uh, for their personal bests. Uh, you know, and as we get higher up in the competition level, these personal bests are going to start to go down, and we're going to see faster times, hopefully. It would be see to, uh, nice to see a few more personal bests drop today. Um, yeah, let's keep an eye on this one. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Time to beat. 33-53 as Martin Cuvillier and Elko de Beer get working on their blocks on the underhand shop here. Martin Cuvillier on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see his frequency of hits is a lot more, although he did get his axe caught there a couple of times, so that's going to slow him down some. And meanwhile, Elko de Beer has already moved over to the other side of his block, and we haven't even hit the 25-second mark, so this could well be a good set of times for both of these guys. Elko de Beer had a good start on the backside of his block at passing the 34-second mark now. And their personal best times aren't going to be beat. But Elko de Beer with a time of 37.39 moves into second place in the underhand chop. And Martin Cuvillier with a 43.90 sits in third place. So there's going to be some shifting in the standings in underhand chop and therefore in the overall standings as well. We'll get to that a little bit more later on. But uh, that was a real nice hit and uh, run by Elko de Beer who has uh, managed to move himself into second place just behind Red Knoll with a time of 37.39. So 33.53 still the time to beat. Held by Red Knoll. That's his personal best. And uh, we'll take a look back here at some of the slow-mos. Watch the start by both of these guys. Big hits and an axe stick. And uh, right there, you can see we might have a bit of an issue with cutting into the foothold, although I think we might be okay. I just saw that it was the line that he cut over, but that's not at the foothold, so safe to say we're good to go for Robin Cuvillier. With his time of 46.72 will be 13 seconds off pace, but still count. Now you see Elko de Beer, his block, as he moves over to the other side quite quickly. And that overhand, overhead shot, that's a nice shot actually, I like that. We could see the uh, action and the axe swing from a different angle. Elko de Beer right there with a final hit, and that block separates with the purpose. And Elko de Beer wins that heat and managed to get himself into second place. And a quick block check by our judge on stage. So you can see. Oh, and there's been a little bit of a, a switch around here. Uh, an adjusted time 
from Martin Cuvelier actually has him sitting in third place there. I did say third place earlier, didn't I, Marcus? I believe so, I believe yes. So, yes, yeah. So, we've, uh, like I said, we've got a bit of a switch around in the overall standings. And the next heat coming out with Ben Terpstra and Martin Harms. So, Ben Terpstra coming out onto the stage now. Followed shortly behind him will be Martin Harms. Ben Terpstra, he is a tall man. And Martin Harms coming out on stage. Now looking at their personal bests, pretty fast, 29, 41, and 26, 67. By the way, the Benelux national record is 24, 17, held by Rick Van Drielen. So let's see if anybody can get that today. Time to beat, 33, 53 for the lead. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Ben Tepstra, Martin Harms beginning their underhand chop heat. Quick axes from both of these guys. Martin Harms really working that though as Ben Tepstra right in front of you using his height to his advantage, but it's Martin Harms, who's moving over to the other side before Tabstra. Now Tabstra steps around to the other side of his block. Martin Harms with the advantage. Now let's see if he can get through in a good time. Bearing down on 30 seconds. Martin Harms right in front of you there with the number one on his leg. Tabstra on the far side. Couple of axe sticks from both of these guys has slowed things down. And as we see the wet blocks just making it really difficult as Martin Harms gets through in 44.07 and Ben Terpstra a couple of seconds later with 47.57. Respectable times, but that puts them in fourth and sixth positions at the moment. There'll be a final adjustment on those times once Bart Janssen gives us the thumbs up that all cuts are good, and it looks like that has been the case. So Martin Harms sits in fourth place with a time of 43.75. Ben Tepstra in sixth place with a time of 47.40. You can see some nice big slabs coming off there. It was Martin Harms that actually got around to the other side of his log first. Ben Tepstra took a little bit more time on the backside, probably hoping to get a little bit deeper so that he wouldn't have to cut so deep on the front side. But uh, the advantage was to Martin Harms in this case as he managed to cut through ahead of Ben Terpstra. Not their personal bests. So we've only had three of those fall today, but a couple of guys that we know definitely have very fast times on the underhand chop. Both of them around 25 seconds. see in the middle screen up top there the time to beat and their two running times on the respective screens above them all right so some changes in the ranking as we take a look here as red mcknoll he stays on top elko de beer right behind him with martin cuvillier and then martin harms moves into fourth place and there we see Robin Cuvillier in fifth place and Ben Tebstra in sixth place with one more heat to go and that is the man who holds the national record for Benelux he'll be in heat number seven is Rick van Trielen and he'll be going up against the favorite for the day Kuhn Martins And as we are getting ready for this final heat in this first discipline, we have to talk about another topic that's very important for steel timber sports, and that's respect and tolerance.
We are Timber Sports, united by passion for the sport and competition. We chop down racism and say yes to tolerance. Yes to tolerance. Say yo to tolerance. Yes 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 to tolerance. We are Timber Sports. And we are getting ready for this final heat. Uh, Troy, let me talk about those safety socks with you. Um, they, they look very dangerous to me. Just, you know, chopping and just wearing those ordinary sneakers. It, it will still hurt if you hit yourself, even though you're wearing those safety socks. Well, we saw this in the Polish championships. These guys have chain mail socks, basically the same thing the Knights wore under their armor back in the day. Uh, and, and that's in order to prevent a really excessive cut in on the, on the ankle or something because they're only wearing, wearing normal tennis shoes or, or you know, some sort of a soft shoe so they have better grip on the blocks so they have to have them on and, and you know, like I said, we saw that in the Polish championship a, a competitor had to actually bow out of the competition because of needing to get stitches on his ankle. He's okay, but, um, you know, the things happen and uh, better that than something worse. So here we go with our final heat in underhand chop. Kuhn Martins going up against Rick Van Drielen. Rick Van Drielen, the man who holds the record for Ben a lot. Three, two, one, go! Let's see if either of these two guys have some good wood. Van Drielen on the right-hand side, Kuhn Martins on the left-hand side, and you can see they're already working that axe quickly. Who will come over to the other side first? There you see Van Drielen right up close there. Kuhn Martins on the other side has already gone over to the other side of his block, and now Van Drielen switches to the other side. Just hitting the uh, 24, 25 second mark now. Kuhn Martins, oh yeah, great time there for Kuhn Martins with a 28-9-8, and that moves him into first place, and our favorite for the event shows why he is that exactly. Rick Van Drielen still trying to carve his out and finally gets through in 39.70. Not a bad time, not the world record or the national record, but he's in a good position in fourth place with that time, and Kuhn Martins with a 28.87 obliterates the 33.53 and takes over the top spot in underhand, in underhand chop. Excuse me. You can see Kuhn Martins actually got his axe caught on those first couple of hits, but then got back into his rhythm on the left-hand side of your screen. And meanwhile... Rick Van Drielen was really going hard. And you can see the frequency of their hits is very, very similar. They're going for those quick ha hacks into the block and Kuhn Martin's there getting caught a couple of times. And imagine if he hadn't gotten that ax caught those two, three times, he might have had a, an even faster time. His personal best, by the way, 25.05. And uh, Rick Van Drielen in the background there after Kuhn Martin's breaks through, he was excited about that one. And Rick Van Drielen came in 10 seconds after him with a time of 39.50 after adjustments were made. And those adjustments I talk about are just coming from competition control as we take a look now at the underhand chop standings. So Kuhn Martin's at the top with a great time of 28.87. He'll get those 12 points, which is all important here for the overall. And then we have Knoll and De Beer in uh, places two and three, and Van Drielen, not a bad situation for him in fourth place. So he's still in the mix. And uh, then I hope we'll get a, an overall standings look as well here. Or not that, uh, but basically the underhand chop standings there after those disciplines is where we at in the overall standings. Well, Troy, um, we've seen a personal best. We've seen a great uh, time from the new leader. And I think we should try and analyze that best chop. So maybe we can get that best chop in slow motion so you can tell us all about it. And here he comes. All right, let's have a look here. So you can see we get a really good start from both of these guys. And right away, Kuhn gets that axe caught in uh, one of these initial blows. And uh, you probably can imagine, like I was saying, if he hadn't got it caught, he would have been maybe one, one and a half seconds faster because he did actually get it caught about three times. Rick Van Drielen on the right-hand side of your screen in this duo is, um, is also 
you know, doing a great job with those quick hits, but uh, it was Kuhn there. You could see, look how he uses his knees, bending down, swinging through the hips, and then really extending his butt upwards as he makes that final blow into the wood. And uh, his precision is just fantastic. You can see each hit right on point. He doesn't make any really big mistakes. Yeah, he got his axe caught a couple of times, but you can see how adept he is at focusing and really making sure that that axe hits exactly in the right spot every single time. Now, there was one of the hooks he got, another one, but just imagine if he hadn't hooked up that many times, how much faster he would have been. And it was a great couple of final blows here by Kuhn Martins as he wins this one with a time of 28.87. And you can see that's the final blow right there. As the time stops on the screen up there, you can see 28.98. But after they go to competition control and take a quick look back to make sure that they're precise with their timing, it gets adjusted. And that's what I'm talking about with the adjustment times. And to be honest, uh, the way Kuhn Martins handles his axe, it seems kind of effortless. Is, is that maybe the secret of success, not using too much power, just getting that flow into your movement? I think it's very much about the flow and, you know, nice smooth arcs, nice clean hits and, and making sure that you don't overpower the axe because that's when we see the axe getting caught deep, especially if the wood is a little bit moist like it is today. So we're going to see a lot more of exciting uh, steel timber sports competition, not only today, but also in the future. Let's take a look at the competitions of 2020. Um, if you missed out on some of them, no problem. We've got videos on demand. So uh, no problem on uh, maybe taking another close look at the Four Nations Cup uh, or maybe the German Championship. But to look out for the 8th November with the European Trophy or the 29th November with the Individual World Championship is uh, something that we are really excited about, Troy, aren't we? Absolutely. I'm, I'm totally looking forward to those two events coming to Munich. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to, uh, to be a part of those as well. And also we can get a seasonal review uh, and that's coming up next. So uh, enjoy the pictures that we will show you right now. but he's not giving up, but he's looking good! Yeah, anyway. Ben Cumberland, a 13.06, amazing! Officially, that is the world record to beat in the new setup. The monkey is off his back. <laughs> Brayden Myers is your 2019 Steel Timber Sports World Champion. Oh, well, I can't wait. <laughs> How does that feel? I mean, uh, hearing your voice, Troy, and seeing those pictures. Uh, yeah, it's goosebumps. Uh, yeah, and, awesome. And uh, Braden Myers, I mean, he's one of the reasons why the, the underhand chop and the standing block chop have uh, progressed as much as they have because he showed up at the Champions Trophy a few years back and just blew everybody's mind with how quickly he could move that axe in and out of that block. I mean, <laughs> it was incredible. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, everybody was sort of like, what's <laughs> happening here with this Australian kid? And then world champion. So uh, good job by him it's absolutely fantastic so <laughs> i, lo I love the watch. way you said that um and now poo, yeah. we're going to take a look at the bracket <laughs> here we go so that sums up what we've seen in round one so far and that's the points that have been awarded so far of course for a dq you do not receive points and uh It's time to move on to our next discipline, and that's stock saw. All you need to know about the tool and the discipline coming up right now for you. Stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark. One downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. The steel MS661CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. 
Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. It's time for the stock saw, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a closer look at the start list. So in heat number one, we have François Lambrecht's take on Florent van Ramdank. In heat number two, it will be Arno Gutzmet against Eugene Gerdes. In heat three, Redmer Knoll taking on Bernd Berners. Heat four, Rick van Drielen and Köhn Martins. In heat five, we'll see Martin Harms and Martin Cuvillier. In Heat 6, Ben Trestra and Robin Cuvillier. And in Heat 7, Elko de Beer and Edwin Dosts. Let's rock this, Troy. Over and back to you. Thanks, Marcus. And I got to say, I'm interested to see if maybe um, we might have a world record happen here. 951 is a new world record that was just set at the Polish Championships not too long ago, at the beginning of our season. So, uh, yeah, there's an opportunity here, and uh, we have seen world records fall at national championships before. So there is an excitement in the air as uh, Franz, Francois Lambrex and uh, Florent Van Remdong come out on the stage. And again, I'm still absolutely flabbergasted by uh, Van Remdong at 68 years of age uh, being out there and competing with these guys. It's awesome. So again, here we have the uh, steel MS661 stock saw. This is essentially the same saw that you can go out and buy at your local steel dealership. And uh, this is a precision tool that has not been adapted, changed, or anything. There's been no changes into the blade or the chain. There's been no motor changes at all. It's been uh, set up by a steel technician to make sure that both saws are operating exactly the same, so this competition is fair. What this is all about is just making sure that you have the right amount of pressure on your saw and keep that throttle going so that the saw doesn't stall as you go through the wood. You also have to make sure that you're precise. You've only got 10 centimeters in order to make your cuts Athlete in ready. as quick Stand a time as possible. Timber. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. And this is absolutely gas heads competition. Van Remdonk with a great start, but it's Lambrex who's got the good pressure as he starts his upwards cut a little bit quicker than Van Remdonk. And now it looks like he's going to get through in a time of 12.54. Great time, and it's a personal best for Lambrex and Van Remdonk gets second place here with a 14-15. So that puts him into second place in the overall. But we do have an investigation on stand A by the looks of it. So Francois Lambrex on stand A with a time of 12.54. That's a personal best for him. But we've got good cuts by the looks of it for all these guys. So there's some happy faces out there. <laughs> Nice. All right, so we have our first scores in for Stocksaw. And that means the scores will be added up. There you see in the orange field, first and second place. That means their scores from earlier are added to their scores from this heat here. What a great start, though, by Van Riemdonk. He got up there very, very quickly. He just didn't have the pressure going through where you could see Lambrex had really good pressure, no real downswing as he came back up for the upstroke, and his timing was very, very good. And there you could see, again, uh, Van Remdonk, no downswing as he came back for his upstroke as well, but he just didn't have the appropriate amount of pressure. Might have put a little bit too much pressure on there, and uh, that saw blade got slowed down a little bit. And there, Bart Janssen. Gives him the thumbs up, and who's excited? Van Remdonk is excited. So there you see our first heat sets our first two positions in stock saw. Lambrex in first and Van Remdonk in second. That means in the overall standings, those two guys will take over first and second place because they received the points so far. But there's still six more heats to go where we're going to distribute some more points in this stock saw. And this is the event for all the gas heads out there that like the noise and the smoke and the smell. It's awesome. Stage is set. 
And you can see those two stock saws sitting there on stage. They're actually sitting in a custom-made rubber pad. Now, in years past, they would put down like a flat rubber pad so that the saws would not hop away from them because in the past the saws had hopped away. But now they have these custom-made rubber pads with a foothold so that the athletes can hold the saws exactly where they need them. Coming onto the stage, Arno Goldschmidt, and he'll be going up against Eugen Harris in heat number two. personal bests are a little bit faster than uh, the current top time time to beat 1250 so let's see how these two gentlemen do as they get their start marks set up for those first cuts okay gentlemen warm up yourself all right, so a few seconds to warm up those saws and get them running cleanly. They'll leave them running as they put them in those pads that I was talking about there, and you can see that holds that saw in place because the motor running, the piston hopping, that uh, bounces all over the place where those pads not there. Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Nice even start by both of them. Kerdes looks like he's got a little bit of a faster cut. Nice upswing by Kerdes as he gets going on his upstroke. This could be a good time for him. Oh, my good Goldschmidt comes from behind with a 12-19. That puts him in third place overall and first place for the stock saw. Just 21 hundredths of a second ahead of... Oh, my goodness, we got some changes going on. Yeah, Eugen Kerdes with a 12-30. Moves into top spot, and we have a DQ on stand one. Oh, no. Arno Goldschmidt. It looks like he might have cut over the line. We're just checking to make sure everything is uh, what's happening with, the, with his stand, if it's a cut line or an incomplete cookie. Ah, there you see. So he cut over the line on his 10-centimeter section of block that he's allowed to cut in. Maybe we'll get a slow-mo of that in the review. So Arno Goldschmidt is disqualified. And this is one of the reasons why these guys make those marks right there to make sure that they really can target for that first cut. Great job on the first cut there by Eugen Jerez. And look at that, barely any downswing as he comes back up for his second cut using his guideline as well. And he did have the slower time of the two. Arno Goldschmidt with a great time, but unfortunately he cut over the line on the way back up by the looks of a huge fat cookie. So uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. And they, they do say thin to win in these motor saw disciplines. And you can see right away, Bart Janssen notices it's cut over the line clearly. So that is a DQ for Arno Goldschmidt, although he did have a very good time. Eugen Gerhardes, Happy about his time of 12.30 being 20 hundredths of a second faster. So he moves in to the top spot in stock saw. And that means in the overall, he should also move into second place with Francois Lambrecht holding on to first place for the moment. Well, I feel really sorry for Arno Goldsmith, I have to say. Two TQs, and, and he would have had a really good time at this stage. Um, Try what, what do you do if you have two DQs? Do you still continue, or do you kind of let things go in a situation like this? Well, you can't give up. I mean, it's a competition. If you give up, you might as well not even bother going to the competition. So <laughs> I, I you, thought you were going to you know, say that, but I had and, to ask and, the question. <laughs> these guys aren't the types of, of people to just say, oh, I've got two DQs, so I'm going to stop now, okay? I mean, they're, they're com competitors, they're battling four points, and, and, and they're going to do everything they can to try and get back into it. But and it's for got him, nothing to it's going to be difficult now because he's got two DQs so he's really going to have to be near perfect for the rest of the competition if he wants to be in there. To reach the second round. So, to so, reach the second yeah. round, exactly. So risk so, everything in, in, in the third discipline. Basically. I, I mean, it's going to be tough for him. I don't know if he's going to make it, quite honestly. Uh, if you want to take a risk, you can also watch Amazon Prime and believe it or not, there's just not only movies 
and really exciting series, but also Steel Timber Sports. We are prime. Oh my God, how close is this? It's one of the closest heats we've had all day long, and it's Australia! When the crowd start, you know, uh, erupting, screaming, shouting, it's, it just really does give you goosebumps. It's pretty awesome to compete in front of a crowd like this. I've been working my ass off the last five years to get to this point. Is it going to be the checker moment? Yes, it is! And the crowd goes to Damon! some people nervous it doesn't make me nervous it makes me ready to go to come here to the world championships is, is one of my dreams it has been ever since as a kid Well, there's only five different sports you can watch on Amazon Prime and Steel Timber Sports is one of them and exciting at Teal Tournament Steel Timber Sports action <laughs> is guaranteed Troy uh, with our next heat Absolutely, Red Knoll going up against Bert Berners. So uh, we'll see. Uh, Red Knoll personal best eleven twenty five in stocks off. Bert Berners with a personal best of ten seventy eight as Red Knoll, who will be on stand one, comes out first. Those glasses hiding the eyes, maybe the eyes of determination or the eyes of fear. Hmm. Who knows? Because he knows he's going up against this man. Bert Berners, who has a slightly faster time in Stocksaw. Here's where being tall isn't necessarily an advantage because, you know, you got more uh, distance to go down to your saw and get it back up into position. Or maybe that's just dopey to say that. But uh, I think being a, a little bit shorter here in this case is a uh, slight advantage is Especially with the differences being minimal. Just, just tiny. Yeah. Hundreds of a second in some cases. Okay, gentlemen. Warm up yourself. All right. Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Wow, good start by both of these guys. They were quick up and on those blocks, but Red McNoll looks like he's got a slightly faster cut on the way down. Gets back on the way up now. Looks like we could have a good time for him. Yeah! 11.30, personal best for Red McNoll, and he's got first place in the overall and first place in stock saw. Baron Bernays, Wow. Not bad for him either. 12.09, not his personal best, but he is the second fastest in stock saw. That was a great heat. I, I didn't even have time to say anything. They were so quick down and out. All right, take a look back here on the warm-ups. And you can see how quick were these guys getting in there. Bert Bernas right there. You could see just slowed down a little bit in that section there. That saw started to get a bit slow on the blade, and then he had a big downswing as he got back up on his upstroke. And the upstroke was very good, though. He had a nice upstroke, so he had even a little bit faster and cleaner on that downstroke. We might have seen a different result here, but as it stands, Red McNoll had the cleanest cuts both on the down and the up, and I didn't recall seeing much of a, a swing underneath to get back into his upward stroke. So hopefully, no, we're not going to get to see a review of his, but uh, Red McNoll, personal best time of 11.18, sits in the top spot and has created the time to beat for everybody else. Bert Bernays sits in second place in the stock saw, and he sits now in fifth place in the overall standings with Red McNoll having 23 points total, sitting top of the overall rankings. But will that change? We'll see in the next heat with Rick van Drielen and Kern Martens. These two mighty mountain men going at it once again. So in the middle of the screen at the top above the signs there you see in red 1118 
is the time to beat. And here comes our first competitor for heat number four in Stocksaw, Rick Van Drielen. As we said off the top of the show, his sister Kim is married to Elko de Beer. So this truly is a family affair. And Kern Martins, the man who had the lead with the fastest time in the underhand chop. Will he have a solid time here in the stock saw and take over the overall lead? Personal bests for both of these guys is not that far apart, only a couple hundredths of a second. And you can see Rick, or excuse me, Kuhn Martins there, precisely measuring out his cut start and cut finish. Rick Van Drielen, both of these guys, veterans of the sport as they do their last minute checks Okay, and setting themselves up on the blocks. Another thing that's very important to pay attention to is there is a line at the top of the block and the hands have to be over that line. This is something that we saw in another event recently where the hands were not over the line and the athlete was disqualified because the hands were not in the right position. So this is all very, very important. Small little nuances that play such a role here. One, go! Oh, wow, look at this. These two guys are so evenly matched up here. Rick Van Trielen, Kuhn Martins, pretty even. Kuhn Martins with a slight advantage on the upstroke. Let's see who's going to get it first. It's Kuhn Martins with 11.01, fastest time of the day. And Rick Van Drielen with the uh, third fastest time on stock saw with an 11.75. That puts Kuhn Martins back into the top of the event. And he is the winner of stock saw thus far. But we still have three more heats to go. But that gives him 24 points total, which puts him atop the overall rank. And let's uh, take a look here in the slow-mo. Some good time with adjusted times now, looking like they've gotten even faster. Kuhn Martins with a 10.92 after adjustment and Rick Van Drielen with an 11.54. Let's look one more time. There you can see Kuhn Martins had a little bit of a high set as he got into the log for the first cut. And here's where it's all about that control and precision. Nice thin cut for Rick Van Drielen right off the hop. No downswing at all as he transitions to the upward stroke. But it was Kuhn Martins who had just a little bit more of a smooth run on the upswing. Speaking of upswing, Buma messing around with the camera in here is distracting. And Kuhn Martins knew that he had a good time there. Very good job by the favorite who has so far not disappointed in his performance today. Fastest time in underhand and now the fastest time in stock saw. Rick Van Drielen, third fastest time in stock saw and Red McNull sitting in second with a personal best. And then the overall standings, there you can see those three guys stay in the top three positions. So no changes there. We just saw the changes happening around in the lower, but we still have a few more heats to go. Three more, in fact, five, six, and seven. All right, stage is set. And that rain is pouring down. That is an unfortunate situation for the guys there. Always nice to have... You know, nice weather for these events. It just makes the attitude and, uh, and the headspace a little bit more fun too. But they're so focused on everything that's going on as Martin Harms comes out onto stage. He'll have stand one and he'll be going up against Martin Cuvillier. Couple of good times. We're not seeing a lot of massive differences between the top guys here with their personal bests on stock saw. You know, only a few hundredths of a second. They're all more or less around the 10, 9, 10 mark. So, um, you know, pretty, pretty fair competition throughout, I think, with all of these guys. Let's just see about, you know, we talked about it off the stop, top of the show. It's about who makes the mistakes, who can, you know, maybe get past that mental block or those, those issues inside your own head to be able to make those cuts nice and clean. Okay, gentlemen, warm up yourself. <laughs>
All right, here we go. Martin Harms. Martin Kubelier. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Nice, clean start by Martin Harms. His upward cut is a way good. Kubelier struggled a little bit and got had to make a bit of an adjustment there. It looks like he felt like maybe the saw was going to stall on him. 10-5-6 for Martin Harms on that stock saw. His first place for him right now. So he pushes Kern Martins down, who had a 10-9-2. There might be an adjustment in that time to make it even a little bit faster. Martin Kubelier... Unfortunately, he had to stop and uh, drop the saw out of the cut a little bit in order to make sure that that blade kept turning. So let's have a look back here what happened. So right there, closest to you is Cuvillier, and you can see a little bit of a choppy downward cut there. And already, Harms on the other side was on the upward cut, and there's that readjustment that cost him that time. Here we go with Martin Harms. Nice, thin to win first cut. Yeah, hardly any downswing as he gets set for his upward cut. Nice time by him. Yeah, and he's happy with that one. He looks at the time and goes, yep, I'm, I'm cool with that. A 10-4-2 puts him in the top spot just ahead of Kuhn Martin. So our favorite gets pushed down into second place in Stocksaw. How's that going to affect his overall? I think he'll be safe and stay in the top spot. Yes, he does. Martin Harms, though, moves up into third place, so that's good for him. So Kuhn Martins, Red McNull, Martin Harms, top three in the overall standings. All right, our next heat, heat number six in Stocksaw. Coming out now, Ben Tebstra. Ben Tabstra with a pretty solid underhand chop was in eighth place there in his heat. So uh, we'll see how he does. Robin Cuvillier, the brother of Martin, coming out now in this heat. Two completely different guys, but look how close their times are. 10.23 and 10.21, personal bests for both of them. By the way, the Benelux national record is 10 even, held by Edwin Dost. And the world record, as I said, 9.51, held by Poland's Marcin Tukowski. And he got that just a few weeks ago. Ben Tepstra, Robin Cuvillier. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, a bit of a hoppy start by Cuvillier. Ben Tepstra has the advantage here as he drops that first cookie. Cuvillier catching up, though. It could be that he might finish this one ahead. Oh, my goodness, now how close is that? Look at that, 11.21, 11.21, that is dead even. They're going to have to go to competition control to readjust those times, but that puts them tied for fourth place at the moment with competition control. Going to need to be looking really closely at who actually broke the top of that block first, if, in fact, it did come that close. Wow, that was great. Okay, we've had a bit of an adjustment here. Let's take a look back first at the start. These guys both got on that first cut so evenly. Ah, oh, excuse me. I lied. It was Cuvillier who had a little bit of a skip to start, but caught up nicely. And on this upstroke, man, he was quick. There you see Tapstra. And again, thin to win is the key because the thinner that block is, the less it binds on the blades as it cuts through. Look at that. Whoa! That couldn't have been timed any more perfectly for the drop. So Ben Tepstra with an 11.05 adjusted time and Robin Cuvillier with an 11.08. Man, oh man, oh man, was that close. So Ben Tepstra just by the hair on his chinny chin chin comes ahead of <laughs> Cuvillier. All 
All right, and we are looking at that great heat one more time. That was a fun heat because they were so close. And look at the flourish by Tamstra as he brings his saw way up in the air. And there you see in the stock saw, three and four for Tebstra and Cuvillier. And in the overall standings, fifth and sixth place, but turned around. So our last heat, heat number seven, getting ready, Elko de Beer and Edwin Dost. Edwin Dost holds the national record for this discipline. And that is a time of 10 even. How hard is it to get 10 seconds even with no hundreds or thousands or anything on the back end? Really hard. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Elko de Beer, not that far back though, with a 10.03. And uh, he's the first one to come out as Edwin Dost joins us on stage now. So there you see Elko de Beer, 10.03, and Edwin Dost with a 10.00. Dost, Edwin Dost, 10 double Why not? Have a little bit of fun with it. All right, boys, here we go. <whistles> Try and imagine lifting up that saw. I mean, it's not a heavy, it's not a heavy oh. saw. It's nicely balanced, the steel MS661, but when you've got to get it off the ground, line it up for a nice thin cut to start inside of a 10 centimeter space and your head playing games with you knowing that you're going up against a guy that could definitely beat you there's a lot that can uh, play a role here all right here we go to your timber three two one go wow great start by both of them elko de beer edwin dost Edwin Dost definitely looking good on the upstroke. Oh, boy! Gets there in 10.43, and Elko de Beer with 10.29. I could have sworn that Edwin Dost was a little bit faster on that uh, right-hand side, so uh, we may have to look back at competition control and just see what kind of adjusted times we have. But Elko de Beer at the moment unofficially with a 10.16, and Edwin Dost with a 10.43. Let's see if that will stay as is. Looking at these cuts one more time, and the start. Pretty good start by Edwin Dost on the right-hand side, but Elko de Beer, wow, how quick was that first cut? Hot knife through butter by Elko de Beer right there. Edwin Dost on the other side. Yeah, and it was just that last five to 10 centimeters on the upstroke that Elko de Beer got uh, a little bit faster through than Edwin Dost did. So um, yeah, a really nice final cut as we look at Very the stock nice stall results. Cut. And de Beer moves into the top spot with Dost in third, moving Cone Martins down into fourth place. And that means Cone Martins moves into second place in the overall standings with Elko de Beer now taking over the lead. Now it's getting interesting. Oh, now it's getting very interesting. Uh, I was always thinking about Kuhn Martins and, and, and Red McNoll, but now this man, Elko de Beer, I mean, he's mm -hmm. up in the lead and... Uh Oh, wow. <laughs> We're looking forward to some really interesting stuff as we proceed to the final discipline of this first round. But uh, from what I've heard, Davy van der Aar is uh, already somewhere live with uh, one of our athletes. So maybe we can go down and... Uh, Find out who he's got. No, we're going into the analysis of that Elke de Beer, the current overall leader. Now watch the upcuts here, Marcus. Elko de Beer on the left-hand side. Edwin Dost looks like he was going to get there first, but then Elko de Beer just came from behind like he had a hot knife going through butter, like I How said. How did he do that? Heat. It was incredible, and you can watch right here. He's got a nice, steady, uh, even smooth, stroke, and yes. it was just so quick on those last 10 centimeters through the top of that block, and he caught up and actually beat Edwin Dost. So it was <laughs> an incredible effort on his part. I, I, he's just, oh, yeah, watch. Yeah, that, that's the way it's No problem. It, it is yeah. what it is, Jeff. Cool as a cucumber as he came out of that one. So good job there. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, 
So, so, so we actually have an interview partner now. So uh, let's take a closer look and go live. And when the rain begins to fall, <laughs> not a personal best time in this discipline, but 10.42, it's a great time. Yeah, it's a great time. I'm happy with the time um, because my first disc was not good for me. The angle was not good, it was not great, so I had to correct it. And yeah, but that time, even then, it's it good for me. All right, uh, you are in third position now. Uh, that's a very good place. Uh, what are you? What is your perspective uh, towards the next disciplines? Yeah, well, uh, standing is my best discipline for me. So that's the next one. So I'm gonna love it because I'm gonna win it. I want to win it. Uh, it seems to me uh, you are in very good shape today. Is it? Well, I hope. I hope. Uh, yeah. Because I heard from your teammates you had not enough time to train, uh, but you did, or uh, what did you do exactly? I take uh, a lot of uh, uh, rest, so that's good preparation also. That's also important, taking yeah. enough rest. Yeah. All right, uh, thanks for the interview. Okay, Marcus and Troy, I think we have a very satisfied athlete in here. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, Davy. Uh, that's what I call preparation. Take a lot of rest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's something you know we we can think about more often. At least I know this man thinks about this uh, more often, Troy. Yeah, I'd like to have more rest, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, with a busy lifestyle, it doesn't always work the way you want it to. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like with any sport; you need to have rest and recovery in order to be able to allow your muscles and your body to recuperate, so that you're really at the top form for when it comes time to uh, be, you know, at that uh, pinnacle of action. So these guys will be doing their best to get to the top positions in their respective nations, whether it be Poland or Germany or Benelux, where we're at now, uh, so that when they do come to the World Championships or the European Championships, that they will be peaking, as they say. So uh, well, Troy, yeah, uh, that's what we're looking uh, for now. Let, let me give you a rest. We're going to go into a commercial. power by steel alleen bij steel dealers een perfect gazon en meer tijd voor je tuinprojecten robotmaaiers by steel alleen bij steel dealers well troy and me have filled up our echoes, and we're getting ready for the standing block chop. What standing block chop is all about, well, we'll show you now. Right after we've shown you the overall <laughs> standing. <laughs> Try, is that a bit of a surprise for you? Mm, no, because it's always sort of, you know, it mixes up as, as the disciplines go through, and, and uh, we're coming into the third discipline now where we see uh, that... Uh, you know, Kuhn Martins, who was the overall leader after the first discipline and did hold on to it for a portion of the second discipline, has now been moved down to third place overall. So, um, yeah, and like we said, anything can happen. But, you know, this is also uh, uh, an important discipline coming up, the standing block chop. Oh, yeah. Because here's where the guys that are proficient at this particular discipline can gain some points. And remember, we got a, a certain number of guys that are going to be moving on to round two and the rest are going to get eliminated from competition here. So that's what's going to be telling to see who is going to move into round two is the standing block chop. Standing block chop. At the standing block chop, the felling of a tree with an ax is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 30 centimeters has to be cut through both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. Standing block chuck. Um, ready for the start list, Troy? I am? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's take a closer look. In heats number one, we'll have Florent van Remdonk take on François Laberecht. In heat two, Arno Godsmet against Bernd Berners. In heat three, Edwin Dost and Eugene Gerders. In heat four, Robin Cuvelier and Redsmer Knoll. Heat five, 
Elko de Bear and Martin Cuvelier. In heat six, we will see Ben Tepstra and Rick van Drielen. And in heat number seven, Martin Harms and Kuhn Martins. Well, standing block chop is, um, yeah, like I said, this is going to be an important one in round one because it is the final discipline in round one. And here's where we're going to see who can gain the points to make the last minute adjustments to get into round two. And uh, at the moment, Kuhn Martins, he's not in a risk position, but there are a couple of guys that are on the bubble that need to pay attention here. Uh, for instance, uh, Edwin Dost is uh, down there. He needs to really do something here, especially considering that he had a DQ earlier on in the underhand chop. He still has an opportunity to move up if he has a really good uh, standing block chop, but it's, yeah, he's very much in a risk position and on the bubble. So, yeah, let's see how this standing block chop does and if we have uh, some major changes in the overall or if it stays status quo. Uh, and it'd be interesting to find out what you guys think. So hashtag Steel Timber Sports, hashtag uh, Kiss My Ax. We're very interested to see your opinion on what's happening right now here at the National Benelux Championships. And of course, uh, some funny picks are always uh, well received. <laughs> But that is time for going back to the sports, back to the competition and back to heat number one. All right, so there you see the blocks are ready for our standing block chop, and we'll bring out our first pairing in heat number one, Florent van Remdonk. Now, our information says 68, but his uh, graphic always says 67, so let's call him 67 and three quarters. Nevertheless, impressive no matter how you look at it. And next up, battling him in heat number one will be Francois Lambrechts. So personal best for both of these guys are up above the minute mark. Just to give you an idea of where the world record is at uh, for the standing block chop, 11.03. That That's is unreal. That is unreal. An amazing time. That's uh, held by Matt Kogar from the USA. He got that back in 2018. The Benelux national record is 18.54, held none other by none other than Kuhn Martin. So That's we know too bad as this well. is a discipline that uh, he can definitely benefit from uh, having skills on it. Here we go with our first Three, heat. Van Remdok, Lambrecht. Go! Van Remdok. I don't know if he got in there a little bit too early. We'll see when it comes down to competition control. And uh, Lambrex, oh, a big hop by that blade from uh, Van Remdok. That's twice now, as his angle was just a little bit too much. And that's going to get in his head a little bit as he tries to reposition and re-angle that blade. You can't have it too steep, otherwise it'll skip off the block. But if you don't have the right angle, you're not going to be cutting in appropriately. And now Lambrex moves to the other side gingerly around the blocks and uh, pieces of timber that have fallen off of there as he slabs out. And on the far side, Van Remdok just passing the 40-second mark as he finally moves over to the backside of his block. Lambrex still pushing through as we pass the 50-second mark here. Francois Lambrex. Now we are just over the minute mark here for both of these gentlemen. Let's see if we can get a block down in under their best times or if it's going to go over. It looks like uh, 105 and now it's 112.92 for the standing block shop for Fra uh, Francois Lambrex. And Florent van Remdok has to be finished very soon or that he's going to go over the allotted time or the limit. And there he does it. Oh, but he does get past the time limit. Oh, so that means a DQ for him. And that is unfortunate. So he went over the time and you can see that's some disappointment. But he can be proud of uh, being out there with these guys and competing nevertheless. Thumbs up for Francois Lambrex for his cut And he has a time of 112.70. And we'll definitely see these times dropping as we get deeper into this competition. And as we know, Kuhn Martins has the national record and uh, therefore is a guy to be keeping a close eye on. Now, watch here. Zremdok. Well, we're not going to get that angle, unfortunately, but uh, that axe skipped a couple of times for him. 
And Lambrex was just doing a good job. Here's the final cut from Lambrex, Francois, and there from Remdoch. Unfortunately for him, it was just too slow. So in the overall standings, Kuhn Martins, who still has yet to compete, moves into second place behind El de Beer. Lambrex is now sitting in third place, but I'm not sure that's going to last very long. With our next heat coming out onto stage, will be heat number two with Arno Goldschmidt and Bert Berners. So here comes... Arno Gutschmidt, who was DQ'd in the two previous disciplines, so now he's really got to make it work if he wants to get some points out of this competition at all. Doesn't seem overly concerned. He's a little bit too relaxed, in my opinion, but hey, you know, everybody's got their own way of doing things, and now Bert Berners coming out onto stage. He looks quite focused as he gets ready to go into standing block shop in heat number two. Personal best for both of these guys. Pretty close together, actually. And same situation. You can see lubing up that axe head to make sure that those first few hits aren't stuck in the block. I don't know. It almost looks like Arnaud okay. might have given up hope. So that let's see if he can uh, pull it together in this one and have a good time. Timber. Three, two, one, go! Almost lost sight of Goldschmidt's uh, block there with the uh, big slabs coming off there, doing some nice precise hits. And there we see Van Aris also getting really deep in his... Backswing is a little bit shorter, but it seems to be working for him as he is getting some nice pieces off of that block, and I believe he might be... Oh, no, I was uh, wrong there. It's going to be Goldschmidt going over to the other side first. He's looking to try and beat his best time of 58.40. Bernard's best time of 54.06. They're coming in on the 40-second mark here now. Oh, big catch by Goldschmidt as he gets that axe caught in there. Bernays now just nearing 50 seconds, passing it. That's looking a little wiggly now. Finally going to get through there. One more hit should do it. No, I'm going to be calling two. Yes, there it is. One double O four five for Bert Bernays and Arno Goldschmidt struggling as he finally gets that last hit to block it at one eleven twenty two. So far, so good, and hopefully no DQ for Arno Goldschmidt, as he'll get some points out of this no matter what. But I don't think we're going to see him in the next round. In fact, I'm pretty positive about that. And you can see he's not really using his hips on the swing. He's using more of his arms. Meanwhile, here we see Bernas taking a little step back, Twisting his hips onto the other side. This looks better on the backside for Gutschmidt as he gets his whole body involved in the situation. But, you know, when you get tired, getting the whole body working is a little bit more difficult. And these guys have gone through two disciplines already. And you can see the big exhales on each hit by Bernays there. Nice big slab coming off. And on the back side, it was like a couple, three more hits to finally get it down. He took a brief pause when he thought that block was going to fall, then had to do one more hit, and finally got it off the top in a time of 10036 adjusted. So that puts him at the top of the standing block so far with Gutschmidt with the 11101 sitting in second place. So finally, Arno Gutschmidt's got some uh, time and some points to speak of, but he is in 10th place at the moment, so we won't see him in the next round, unfortunately. And Bert Berners in 6th place. Looking good so far, but there's still 
quite a few more heats to go in this standing block chop. So the overall could well change. I think we can be guaranteed of it, Marcus. Yeah, and just like you said, uh, like Arno Goodsmith told us, it's not just about the points. Just like steel timber sports in general is not just about axes and saws. It's also about the wood, the premium wood. Timber Sports uses wood as a natural product. It is therefore especially important to maintain fair competition conditions and that the wood is sustainably grown. Hi, my name's Spike Milton, Global Sports Director for Steel Timber Sports. Together with Head of Wood, Mr. Bart Jensen, we have a wealth of knowledge and experience with long-term wood management. We have different partners for finding the good wood and here we are one of the plantations of our partner this year. One of the biggest challenges that I actually have as part of my role is to work with our wood suppliers. There are some beautiful young trees. These young trees are the future. For us, we have to find consistent and fair wood. The international timber sports competitions mainly use fast-growing poplar wood from certified plantations, as well as white pine. After all our still timber sports competitions, the spent wood is collected and recycled. A great example of this is wood pellets for biomass to be used for green energy. Always great to see what wood is all about, uh, Troy. I mean, <laughs> you've been working with wood for many, many years. Uh, what makes the steel timber sports competition so special? Well, like you saw in the uh, in in the story there, um, you know Bart and Spike they they spent a lot of time searching for you know the right type of wood, the right size of wood, the right moisture. They they were checking the moisture in the wood, um, and all of the wood for each individual competition is taken from the same um, sets of trees that they take out of these uh, various plantations. So at the end of the day, that means for the athletes that the wood is as fair as possible. Now, how it affects the way that the athletes are able to cut the wood is if the wood is a bit more moist or if it's really dry, it's going to affect how the axes and saws are reacting with the wood itself. And as we see here in Benelux, it's, um, it's a bit wet. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's, so it's just like in skiing. You can say if you have a sunny weather, the snow might be faster. Uh, if it's moisture and, and, and cold, kind of um, not so dry, you're going to slow down. I mean, with the wood, it's, it's pretty similar. Similar idea, right. Okay. So, I mean, basically what they're looking for is a nice balance of moisture uh, in the wood so that it doesn't get chippy and crumbly, but uh, at the same time, you don't want to have it too wet so that, you know, it's like trying to, to hit through uh, cement. And also, they pay a lot of attention in making sure that the wood that comes to the competitions has no knots in it at all because trying to cut through a knot especially with an axe is really difficult and you saw there on a couple of occasions uh, where the axe skipped off of the the block because of a bad angle well, a knot can cause that to happen even if the angle is good so the wood is very important and that's why these guys take such care in making sure that the wood that comes to these competitions is fair for everybody that's participating so let's get back to a fair competition right now All right, Edwin Dost going up against Eugene Geres. In this final round. Yeah, in, in rounds of number final one. Discipline of final round discipline of round, round number one, yeah. Stand to your A couple of pretty evenly matched guys, Three, so let's see how it two, breaks one, down as go. they get going. Here we go. Edwin Dost a little bit faster with the axe than Geres. But Herdes is slabbing out some nice big pieces on his block. So as you say, you know, he's got some good wood there. Not sure if that's Edwin Dost moving over to the other side of his block first. It uh, is not. It's uh, Herdes. So Herdes was quicker over to the other side as he slabbed out some nice big pieces. And uh, seems like he's got some pretty precise hits going on there. Edwin Doe still working on the front side of his blocks from what I see. Yeah. Or has he actually? No, he has actually moved over to the other side. It's, uh, he's already cutting through the back side. So there we go. Geras with a 47.07. So that puts him in first place in standing block chop with Edwin Dost. 
Still trying to get through it. One more hit should do it. No, my count is way off today. 57.06 is second place for Edwin Dost. So, Geras in the top spot with a time to beat of 47.07. Edwin Dost in second place with a 57.06. All right, taking a look back here. And that was Dost having a quick check there to see what was happening with his block and how much farther he had to go. And uh, just aiming just to try and chop that thing through. And there, close up to you, is Geras. You can see pushing off of that back foot, twisting his hips, and then putting everything from his core muscles and his core strength into the blows on that block chopping down, chopping up then chopping down again and uh, he actually finally did get through in a 46.78 time and it was just a couple of seconds after that that Edwin Dost joined him dropping the top off of that block so Geras in the top of the standing block so far with Dost right behind him and let's take a look at the overall standings now. So Dost moves into second place, Geras in fourth. De Beer still on top with Martins moving down into third place. But either of those guys have yet to cut in the standing block. Our <coughs> next heat coming out, heat number four, Robin Cuvelier up against Redmer Knoll. Robin Cuvelier coming out first. Personal best for him in standing block is a 37.86. That is definitely a respectable time. And he's joined by Redmar Knoll, who is coming out. His personal best on this event is 34.03. So if times were the consideration here, then Redmar Knoll would have the advantage. Ten years difference between the two. Ten years experience as well, perhaps. Let's see. All right. Last couple of practice swings for Robin Cuvillier. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, with his axe getting stuck in there quite quickly early on. Now he's got that flow going, getting into his rhythm, and you could see the speed and the power of his hits as he's trying to be as accurate as possible. And now moving over, Redmar Knoll moves over to the other side quickly. He could have a good time today. That block is looking very nice for him as well. Cuvillier finally moves over to the other side on his, but Redmar Knoll is going to have a good time. There it is. It goes down in 26-7-6, a personal best for Redmar Knoll. And Cuvillier trying to get his down. His personal best, a 37.86. That's not going to happen today. But he finally blocks it in a time of 26.99. Now, wait a minute. That's going to be adjusted for sure, though, because uh, Red Knoll was at 26.76. That's a personal best. And Robin Cuvillier was still cutting. There we go. Adjusted time just came up on my screen now. A 40.22. So Redmark Knoll with a fantastic effort today. Looking back at the slow-mo, two hits down below, two hits on top, and a good slab out by Cuvillier. And then you can see on the back side there, on the far side of the stage, Redmark Knoll absolutely putting everything into it. And here the last few hits, one stick by him, and then a couple of last hits. He skips out the side of that one. He wanted to have that a little more centered, but nevertheless, Gave a pirouette hit as that last hit drops the block in a time of 26.49. Still a good time by Robin Cuvillier, who is sitting in second place in the standing block with a 40.22. Just ahead of Eugen Geras with a 46.78. And uh, with a personal best, that's a great job by Redmer Knoll. Let's see how that changes the overall. Ooh, look at that. Knoll and Cuvillier on top with De Beers and Kuhn Martins being shoved down to third and fourth place. And that means uh, a little bit of fun could still to come <laughs> for these guys. We're moving on to Heat 5 shortly. And uh, Heat 5 is going to be a good one because that's Elko de Beer 
against Martin Cuvillier. Well, and Red McNall, discipline one, personal best. Discipline two, personal best. Discipline three, personal best. This might turn out historic for him. And uh, talking about history, look at these lovely pictures right at the back of our studio. It's time to take a closer look at the history of the original extreme sport. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. Expert woodsman who can cut down a tree more easily than most people can chop one up. When it really comes to tackling large lumps, you can't beat the men of the forestry company as well. An axeman's gathering. This is Tom is losing the loss against it. And that means we're going right back to the competition. Standing block chops, heats five, six, and seven. Stage crew still doing a little bit of last minute preparations there. And I just wanted to mention that uh, Red Marknoll actually uh, was the winner of the 2020. Uh, Dutch National Championship, so uh, he got uh, first place at the Dutch Cup, and we mentioned off the top of the show, Marcus, that he was one of the guys that could very well challenge for the overall win here against Kern Martin. So it's already showing with three personal bests on the day that he is definitely he on an this. upward stroke. Yeah, and he definitely wants this, as you yeah. can see. So, so it might end up with the Belgium champion taking on uh, the Dutch champion. So. Which would be fantastic. Oh, yes. Yep. And let's not forget, we've got the team competition coming up tonight on a different stream as, as well. well yeah. That's, That's going to be, be very fun. entertaining as well, yeah. All right, Elko de Beer will be going up against Martin Cuvillier in this one. Elko de Beer, personal best of 29-13. Uh, Elko, yeah, Elko de Beer, 29-13. Martin Cuvillier with a 27-47. But as we've seen, these personal bests can switch and change. And, uh, you know, the wood isn't cutting as quick today as, as we've seen it cut in the past. So that's, uh, you know, an environmental aspect as well that's going to change the times for these guys. So it's not like they're not cutting well. It's just there's so many different factors that are playing a role yeah. here. All right, let's get at it. Stand to your timber. Three, two. One, go! All right, here we go. Martin Cuvillier, quick with his axe, slabbing out nicely. And you can see the intensity in every hit that he puts down here as he gets in nice and quick on those first few cuts. Looking for those precise hits like that one right there as he switches to the other side. Martin Cuvillier now on the other side. Elko de Beer also on the other side. Oh, this could be close between the two of them. I'm going to say Cuvillier looks a little bit closer, but de Beer is also digging deep and hard on the backside of that log. A little skip off his block. Elko de Beer gets it stuck now in Martin Cuvillier and Elko de Beer battling hard to try and see who drops that block first. And it looks like it might be Cuvillier. Oh, yeah, it's going to go down. Cuvillier, 42-5-0 oh, and a 42-18 for Elko de Beer. I didn't see Elko's last hit, so it looks like he did drop it before Cuvillier. And he did, in fact, 42-18 to 42-50. Wow, that's not much difference between those two guys. A really evenly matched heat there in standing block. So first few hits there by Elko de Beer. And you can see as we get into the action a bit more and in these slow-mos, you can really see how the guys are pushing off of that back leg, twisting the hips to try and activate the core muscles of the body and not just do everything from the arms. Nice extension on the arms, grabbing the axe handle as far down as possible and trying to get as precise an angle and hit as you can. Now there is an example coming up right now of a real nice precise hit into that block on the line as Cuvillier moves to the other side. And from this angle, I hope we get to see 
The final blows here. Yep, there it goes. Elko de Beer with that great cut. The final time of 41.93. Still not quite as fast as Red McNall with a personal best 26.49. So that's the time to beat in standing block here. And there we see De Beer, Cuvillier, third and fourth. How does that change them in the overall? Oop, De Beer moves to the top again. Cuvillier in fifth place, and uh, Red Knoll moves down into second place. So uh, 32 points for De Beer at the moment in the overall, and Red Knoll with 29, so he's not that far back. Kuhn Martins has 21 points, so he needs to have a good heat number seven, but before that, heat number six with Ben Terpstra, who's coming out onto the stage now. He's going uh, up against a power hitter in Rick Van Drielen. Now, Ben Tabstra has the height here. He's a tall man. Here comes Rick Van Drielen now. Rick Van Drielen, on the other hand, is a powerful man. Let's take a look at their numbers. Rick Van Drielen, 187 centimeters tall, 125 kilograms. Tabstra, two meters, 100 kilograms. So, Tabstra, if he can use that height to his advantage. We'll have a wide stance and be well back from the log as he tries to get long, clean, precise hits. Rick, on the other hand, will be looking to use that power in his experience and get moving quickly with that axe. Let's see how these two guys match up with each other as we get ready for he number six in standing block. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one. Go! You can see Tapstra slabbing out some nice ones. Rick Van Drielen, though, he isn't wasting any time making those quick hits. Choking up on the axe just a little bit as he moves around to the other side quickly. And now Tapstra has moved over to the other side of his. Big chunks coming out of Rick Van Drielen, though. We could have a very nice time. Fun Van Drielen here. Tapstra looking good as well. Van Drielen. He's getting through to the backside of that. Gets it down in 28-8-1. Nice time for Rick Van Drielen. And Ben Terpstra should get two more hits out of this if he can aim it right. And whoa! Just a hair holding onto that block as he drops it in 37-28. So Rick Van Drielen, 2.32 seconds off pace, but in second place at the moment behind Red McNoll in standing block chop van. Ben Terpstra with a 37-28 moves up into third place in standing block chop. Let's see how that affects the overall when we get our calculation after the slow-mos here. Let's watch this again. Nice clean start by Terpstra there as he gets some big slabs out of those first few hits. But you can see on the backside, Rick Van Drielen making shorter, heavier hits on the block and actually got through there to start things off fairly quickly and was just ahead moving over to the other side of the block. And here, the final blows from Rick Van Drielen to get that top block off in a nice time of 28.85. Another angle here from our camera guy, almost getting hit by those slabs coming off of the block, and there it goes. Nice job by the veteran Rick Van Drielen with a 28.85, and Ben Terpstra with a 38.43, sitting in third place at the moment. So there you see Van Drielen and Terpstra, second and third in standing block chop. Let's see how that changes the overall. De Beer holding on to the top still. Knoll in second place, and Van Drielen and Tapstra in third and fourth. So they're in good position with one more heat to go. They should be safe, but the next heat has Martin Harms and Kuhn Martins in the mix. You know, sometimes people ask me, hey, Mark, is your studio, it's so tidy, it's so clean. You want to know my secret? Well, I'll tell you just now. Power by Steel. Alleen bij Steel Dealers. Well, now that you know my secret, it's time for the final heat and the favorites. Kuhn Martins, Troy. 
Do you think this is his discipline? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, he, Kuhn Martins holds the, the Benelux national record for standing block chops, so that tells you everything you need to know about the fact that he is absolutely capable of rocking and rolling in this particular discipline. So if he can put down a very good time, which we expect that he will do, uh, then it's a you know it's going to mean he's going to take over the top spot again. And he seemed very and confident. He seemed very confident, although he didn't have the top spot in the stock saw. He was still solid. Solid and we'll see how he does here. Let's go for it. So pretty evenly matched, these two guys. Both the same, well, roughly the same age. Martin Harms, a bit older, a bit heavier. Has yeah. the advantage of weight here, but Kuhn Martins is ready. such a slick Stand competitor. to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Watch the axe speed of Kuhn Martins. And Martin Harms, oh wow, he's also really quick with the axe. Big stick by Martin Harms though, but he gets a nice big slab out there. Working well on this side as he moves over to the other side of his block, but Kuhn Martins is already there working on the back side. Oh, Kuhn Martins, a little bit too expectant that he's going to get that down, but he's got himself a 24-13 time. That puts him into the lead in standing block chop. That means he wins this discipline. Martin Harms with a 29-61 fourth place in standing block chop, and that means we're going to have some changes again in the overall standings. Kuhn Martins should be back on top. Kuhn Martins here, you could see. Oh, that's not Kuhn Martins, excuse me. Doctor, yeah, it is. You could see he's just putting every bit of effort as mentally, physically, absolutely capable here as he does a great job. Martin Harms on the far side. Kuhn Martins was actually over to the backside of his block after Martin Harms. No, no, he was there before him. And then a little bit of over expectation from Kuhn Martins as. Uh, that block just decided to hold on for two more hits after he thought he had it down. Let's look at this again here. There, he looks at it. Oh, doesn't go down. Whoa, this hold on by a thread. Damn it. Let's get that thing off. And finally he does. A big grin on his face as he looks at the time. He's like, yeah, okay, I'll take it. Why not? <laughs> but a good job by him nevertheless. So, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, Kuhn Martins takes over the win in standing block. Uh, Red McNull in second place. That's the overall standings. There you go. De Beer, who was in the lead, now moves to third place. Third place. Kuhn Martins has the top spot with Red McNoll sitting in second place. So there's that battle that we're hoping is going to come and start brewing for us with Red McNoll in uh, Kuhn Martins going head to head against each other here. Yeah, yeah now that you mentioned Kuhn Martins, I really enjoyed it. Like, oh, yeah, done and dusted. No, it's not. And then, like, <laughs> come on. It's, and still, you know, getting the top spot. So yep. credits to this man. He is really prepared, maybe to, uh, you know, defend his title. So uh, let's find out more from our field reporter, Davey. If you can hear us, I'm sure you've got an interview partner that we're very much looking forward to hear from also oh, we're getting the analysis first oh, yeah. Troy you've got to help me on this one so you could see here who was the fastest no yeah he about was that, the fastest in, uh, and you could see he just has such precise hits like each hit is perfectly marked that one's a little bit off so I've kind of shot myself in the foot with that call but uh, you can see there each time he hits he's just really on point with each of those hits precisely slabbing out nicely and here you can see sets his axe in gets around to the other side and then starts on the back side of that block with some nice big hits and you can already see it starting to wiggle on the top a little bit but the funny part was at the end of his set of hits he thought he had it down and you know, the axe swings through. Wait for it here. There it is. Swings through. He thought he had it then. Bam. Like, okay, that's got it now. And no, then it holds on by just a thread. And he's like, ah, got to get that down. One more hit. Take this. And take this. You can imagine in, in slow-mo, it looks like it's four or five seconds, you know. But in, in real time, it's maybe a second that he has to think about it, react, and knock it down. And that changed his time. But still, you know, the fastest time on the day. And um, he's your winner in standing block chop. And that means that uh, he is now... Uh, back to being the overall leader as we move to round two, where he will also be competing. And uh, we have an interview partner for our running reporter, Davey. 
Can you hear us? If yes, who's with you? So Dave is still waiting for us, Troy, obviously. Ben Terpstra, ah, yes. sixth position yeah, yeah. in the overall standings. Are you happy with this discipline? Yeah, not, not happy enough. I wish I could be in the top three. That should be the best. But yeah, I'm, I'm through in, in the next round. So that's the most important thing. So uh, now uh, yeah. just uh, pick up my points and uh, see how it goes. Yeah. What's for you the most valuable skill in this discipline, in the standing block chop? Standing block chop, yeah, if, if you have a good axe that, that cuts really deep. Yeah. <laughs> and I use the banana most of the time. That's a good axe, but this axe was sticking so much and you can't keep the pace up. Every time when you put it in, you, you can't smoothly put it back. So that, that's, yeah, that's not the way you want it. No, no, of course, yeah. Uh, I saw a lot of strength coming out of the hips. Is that a movement that you have been exercising uh, the last few months? Because I heard you are going to be a father soon. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. wonderful news. Is it your first baby? Yeah, it's going to be my first. Okay. Yeah. It's and coming uh, in uh, the beginning of uh, December. So, uh, yeah. The beginning more, of December? Yeah, so uh, two more months now. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're getting close. So, uh, All right. Yeah. Do you have a special message for your wife, uh, maybe right now? Yeah. Love yeah. you, baby. Love you, baby. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, thanks for uh, the interview and uh, good okay, luck. Man. Right. Thank you, thank you. Yep. Marcus and Troy, uh, what I want to say, I like the image of Troy standing behind uh, or standing on his uh, pupiter, uh, as they say. Eh? He looks like uh, a teacher to me, uh, uh, Troy. <laughs> But yeah, trying to educate a little bit back here, but it's not really working so well. Marcus? Well, I've been educating a lot. I mean, Davey, you telling us about hip movements and somebody <laughs> being a father soon. <laughs> this man up here is telling me everything about, you know, axe movement and stuff. But, uh, you know, talking about those sharp axes, I know somebody who definitely has one. That's uh, Jason Winyard. And uh, we have a new magazine on, on YouTube coming up for you very soon. It's called Mr. Timber Sports. And, uh, yeah, make sure not to miss out on this because this is going to be very special. Jason Winyard is Mr. Timber Sports. He showed everyone how good he is by winning Timber Sports nine times. I grew up watching Jason Winyard. I would always pretend I was him. Man, I would just love the opportunity to compete with this guy. It's a super fierce competition and one that uh, we all want to win. I believe I can beat anyone in this sport. Come on, Liverpool! Make some noise! An amazing hit on that one! Oh yeah, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's really worth it. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Just like uh, our highlights from round one. They are coming up next. Single buck. The single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc of a 46 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about 5 kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros.
So we're moving directly into round number two and the single buck competition. Let's take a look at the starting order. We've got four heats because there's only eight athletes left and Martin Cuvillier will take on Robin Cuvillier. So the brothers are going to have a duel in this first heat. In heat number two, Pen Terstra will take on Rick van Drelen. Heat three will consist of Martin Harms and Elko de Beer. And in heat number four, Redmer Knoll and Kuhn Martins will rock and roll. So let's get ready for the single buck. I can't wait. Troy, the Kaiser is ready. Yeah. All right. And you can see those shoes that the guys are wearing with uh, it's, it's like uh, spikes on the bottom. It's almost like track shoes. It's ordered to give them as much grip as they can possibly have when they're using these big two meter long saws. Now, I think personally, this is probably the discipline that is the most finicky, except for maybe the hot saw because you have to have the perfect angle with this saw, and it's such a beast. It's two meters long, and you have to be perfect with your technique. Here we go. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right. Choppy start by... Now we've got Rick Van Driel enlisted there on the right-hand side, but I'm not sure that's correct because our... It is Rick Van Driel, okay. And Martin Cuvillier. Oh, Rick Van Driel with a great time of 16.39. Martin Cuvillier. Oh, a little bit of a stick there, and that's what I was talking about with that particular discipline and the single buck it is so difficult to keep that flow going on that long saw and rick van Drielen, he had a really quick set of starting cuts to get that saw moving and going and then moved into longer strokes and so watching the replay uh when we could take a better look at it how his technique worked in his to his advantage so here we see rick van Drielen focus getting ready Quick, sharp, really short cuts to start and then gets into those long flowy strokes, kept the flow going, kept the angle of that saw moving and then a nice final cut. So a good drop by Rick Van Drielen in 1620. By the way, his personal best, 14 and change. So not that far off for Rick in this one. And uh, yeah, we had a little bit of a switch around in our uh, lineups there. So Rick Van Drielen winning this one, Martin Cuvillier, Cuvillier in second place. And uh, in the overall standings, Rick takes over the top spot with Cuvillier moving into third place. And our next heat getting lined up will be Ben Tepstra going up against Robin Cuvillier. So Robin Cuvillier moved to the second heat uh, against Ben Tepstra. Remember these two meter long saws, you have to really have technique because of the, uh, uh, the sweeper teeth and the cutter teeth. And, uh, you know, it's, it's cutting and sweeping in both directions and, and pulling out material. And so if you have the wrong angle, it's going to get hooked up. Those teeth are 10 centimeters long. Uh, and it really makes a difference to just keep the flow going as best you can. And then... Now we've got Ben Terpstra and Robin Cuvillier. Cuv uh, Robin Cuvillier right there setting up his saw on the block. Now he'll take a few strides or strokes to get that uh, saw set. Then our judge will check the depth of his starting cut to make sure it's fair and compare that with Ben Terpstra, who has just set his saw. And now he's good to go. We'll get over to the other side as... Cuvillier gets his saw in position and ready to go. All right, here Stand we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, Tapstra and Cuvillier, both of them getting into it right away. Tapstra grimacing, using that entire saw. Cuvillier doing his best. Tapstra gets hooked up a little bit. Cuvillier, nice long strokes from him. Tapstra looking like he's going to get through there. 
He's really using his two meters to his advantage. Great time for Tampshire with 20, 21. Cuvillier, oh no, he breaks it off. He's got to cut that last little section off for it to count. That is a difficult thing for him as uh, keeping that saw in position there on that last little piece of the cookie to get it down. Should be fair now as he did cut off that last section. All is looking okay, but of course it's going to come to a judge's call. So it is under review. We did see the cookie break off, but he did go back and cut that last section out. <laughs> and there we see Tapstra with a great cut of 1997. And it turns out that it will be a DQ on stand number two for Robin Cuvillier. Unfortunately, he had a false start, so it had nothing to do with the cookie breaking and that last little piece being cut off. He started a little bit too early. Let's take a look back at, oh yeah, right there. It was just a little bit too early on the start for Cuvillier. And Terpstra just was super clean on his cuts. You could see him using that whole saw. The tip of the saw disappears into the block as he cuts through. Great job by Tapstra there. So Ben Tapstra with a 19.97 is sitting in second place. And there's that little piece that was left over from the cookie. Now normally, had there not been a false start, that would have been fair to finish off the cut. But unfortunately, we have Cuvillier with a DQ for a false start, so no points for him. And Tebstra sitting in second place now in the overall with Rick Van Drielen on top. And that is after two heats in the single buck. And we move on to heat number three in single buck with Martin Harms and Elko De Beer. And we are rocking and rolling through these single bucks. I'm not sure I could survive the single buck. <laughs> these are just beasts, these saws. Two meters long, 10 centimeter long teeth, sweepers and cutters. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a heavy amount of work in order to get this saw working, started, and imagine if it gets ah. stuck or bowed and then you have to restart it. It's just draining. It's ready. Stand to your timber. All right, here we go. Three, Martin Harms, two, Elko De Beer. Go! So both of them opting for choppy quick starts, and then Martin Harms gets into those long strokes, using his entire core strength to try and get through there nice and clean. Elko De Beer lagging a bit behind. Martin Harms gets stuck, though, gives Martin or Elko De Beer a chance to catch up. Martin Harms, though, he gets stuck now again. Oh, Elko De Beer has an opportunity here. Elko De Beer gets stuck. Martin Harms finally gets it through, and Elko De Beer drops it just slightly behind. But the time hasn't stopped on our screen, but we have 22.75 and 23.72, respectively, for Martin Harms and Elko De Beer. Wow, that was crazy. Martin Harms getting the saw stuck three times, no less. And Elko De Beer had an opportunity to catch up. And then he got his saw stuck. And boy, oh boy, it came close at the end. Adjusted times now. We're looking at it. Martin Harms with a 22.42 sitting in third place. Elko De Beer with a 23.46 in fourth place. You can see here those short, choppy cuts to start that saw moving. And then getting into those long strokes. And you can watch on the left-hand side of your screen right here. We got a stick by Martin Harms. Yeah, the angle was just a little bit too steep. And then he stuck it again near the bottom of his cut. That gave Elko De Beer an opportunity to catch up. And right there it sticks again. And then Elko De Beer, he kept going. And then he got stuck on his stroke. And right there, a quick stick. But the last cut by Martin Harms gets through. And Elko De Beer, not that far behind. Wow, close. So three and four by Harms and De Beer. And if we look at the overall standings now, De Beer should move into, oh, that's strange there. So De Beer sits in third place with Martin Harms in second. Van Drielen still on the top of the leaderboard with one more heat to go. And that's Red Knoll and Kuhn Martins. Now this is the heat that we've been waiting for. These two guys winning of their respective countries and now going for the Benelux Championship, Red McNoll, the young guy at 27. He won 
the Netherlands Championship, the Dutch Championship, and Kuren Martens won the Belgian Championship. And now they are going head to head for the first time today in the single buck in round two. Who will come out on top? This is national pride at stake now. <laughs> Bart Janssen, quick check with his gauge to make sure that the saw is in the right position and right depth. Red McNull setting his. Struggling a little bit to get those teeth into the position. So notice <whistles> Kuhn Martins, his saw is very far in okay. to the cut length. As opposed to Elko, or excuse me, Red McNoll, who's got his Stand saw set your mid timber. saw on the block. Three, two, whose technique one, will be go. advantageous here. So Knoll, short, sharp, cuts. Martins straight into it with those long strokes, and it looks like the advantage goes to Martins here as he is using every ounce of that saw, cutting through from tip to tail. Cohen Martins looking good. No, not that bad, but Cohen Martins with a 15-17. Wow, fastest time of the day by a good second. Red McNoll struggling on the end there, and oh, that's going to be trouble for him. It looks like he might have to go back and cut that. I saw that there was still some material left. Could it just be threads, or is there actually a piece of the block left? We'll have to wait for Bart Janssen to give a thumbs up. Doesn't look like there's any problems so far, though, but it's not... The result that Red McNoll wanted with a 25.07, that's a personal best for him. So obviously not his strongest discipline, but Kern Martins with a ripper of a time of 14.97 takes the win here in single buck. Let's look at this again. So there you see on the left-hand side, short, quick start strokes, and then just to get that saw going, and he's got his lube and wedger right there. That sounded dirty. And there you see Kuhn Martins with long strokes, using every ounce of his core strength. We really, really, really wide stance as he draws that saw through and that last push. Wow, fantastic. Great time for him with an adjusted time of 14.97. He is 1 and 23 hundredths of a second faster than Rick Van Drielen. So he wins the single buck, and that's another top ranking for him. And he will undoubtedly move to the top of the leaderboard again. Here we see the single block results. Kuhn Martins, Rick Van Drielen, Ben Terpstra, one, two, and three. Great job by Terpstra. And in the overall standings, there you see, yep. Martins, Van Drielen, Harms, De Beer, and Red McCall now down in fifth place. So he has got some work cut out for him, Marcus, as we move to springboard. Oh, wow. Kuhn Martins, very, very impressive, I have to say. And uh, Davey, if you can hear us, uh, we hope that you are with an interview partner right now. There he is. Are you good in lip reading, Troy? I Not a personal best oh, no, this okay. time, but uh, yeah, the best discipline yet is single buck. So, what uh, what went wrong? <laughs> what went wrong? The the heart was very wood. Okay. And Kuhn Martin was better. Okay. You, That's the thing. All right. Now it is really hard wood, and for me personally, it's very hard to to do this without an audience. I really miss the audience. Mm -hmm. And, and so I hope next year we'll be there with the whole crew because the audience is the crew too. One big family. All right. And maybe those are those two seconds I'm missing up here. So the cheers from the audience is yeah, yeah. something you uh, really, really miss right yeah. now. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I love to interact with the audience. Mm -hmm. So hello. <laughs> <laughs> Very clean, but uh, yeah. it's not the real thing. No, of, of course, of course. Um, you have the Benelux record on this discipline. Yeah. So I hoped on a better time. But what do you do when the saw gets stuck into the wood? Is there something you can do as a lumberjack then? Well, the thing is, if you start out with, with uh, the first two strokes, you have to keep your saw underneath your, your, your uh, shoulders. Okay. And if you don't do that, you just lift it too much and then you get a, a hang up. And if you're not concentrated enough, 
then you have that problem and mostly it's at the end because then the wood gets thinner All right. and then you get a hookup. Yeah, so. but then we have another problem like we saw uh, with Robin Cuvelier. Yeah. Uh, his cookie just cut up. Yeah. So, yeah. Because it's a, long, it, it's a long saw, it bends and it just breaks the wood. All right, yeah. okay. So what's the perspective for the next discipline for you? Oh, I'm just happy to be there. And, and at the moment, <laughs> if I get my springboard underneath 120, I'll, I'll be happy. And then I advance to the hot saw, and that's my favorite discipline, not the single block. All right. I love hot saw. Okay, yeah. all right. Thumbs up for Rick van Driele. And now back to you guys. Well, Rick, uh, we miss the audience too, but uh, we're really enjoying this competition so far. I've seen a, a lot of great efforts, and uh, I think we're going to take a closer look at a very special effort now. Yeah, here we see Kuhn Martins getting set up for his first few cuts now. We mentioned the different styles. Some guys start off with short, quick cuts, and uh, Kuhn Martins, we saw him get right into it straight away with long, oh, steady wow. strokes, and you could wow. see the tip of that saw disappearing into the block of wood, and that's really the telltale sign for somebody that's confident and has good flow and is, you know, mentally ready. And that last final push, and look how deep he is in his legs there. It was all the difference maker for, for Kuhn Martins in that one. This man is vicious. That <laughs> is like, boom, boom, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that could be a motor saw, the way he worked it. <laughs> really, really good job. And he knows he's in great shape. You can really see it from yeah. his face. Yeah, absolutely he's, amazing. He's feeling good. He's feeling confident, and uh, he's ready to go. Well, well, so are we. We got Springboard coming up next, and all you need. Oh, I just heard we're going back on side before we're going to move on to the Springboard because we've got a Facebook contest coming up. So let's take a closer look. And here with us, our project lead for Stilts Timber Sports Belgium, John Bosmans. You have something to tell us. Yes, Davy, indeed. Uh, we had a Facebook contest for our Benelux fans. Uh, they could win this cordless garden pruner, a GTA 26. I will announce the winner now. Uh, we will uh, announce this in French and in, uh, in Dutch because we speak uh, more languages in Belgium. Um, Quelqu'un pouvait gagner une scie de jardin sur batterie GTA 26 ici. Uh, le gagnant est malheureusement pas uh, quelqu'un qui parle français. On va uh, l'annoncer en néerlandais. Dus iemand kon een GTA accu snoeischaar winnen vandaag via onze Facebook contest. Dat was de persoon die vandaag de exacte tijd kon raden of dichtst bij de tijd kon raden de beste single bug tijd van vandaag. Dat was 14.97 en er zat iemand spot on en dat was Jan Tellegen uit Nederland. Jan Proficiat, jij wint een accu uh, zaag GTA 26. Wij contacteren jou binnenkort via e-mail en dan kan je bij jouw favoriete dealer deze zaag gaan afhalen. Veel plezier ermee. Congratulations. A pruning machine for Jan. I want one of those. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, a translation, a show one. Congratulations, you just won yourself a steel GTA 26. Was that uh, what you understood? Uh, I, yeah, I got that. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're proceeding uh, to Springboard, as uh, we mentioned, but let's take a closer look at the original bracket of the oval standing now. Troy, uh, things have moved and changed and shuffled again. A little bit, yeah. Also, uh, we're, we're looking at Martin uh, or Kuhn Martin still on top of the leaderboard or back on top of the leaderboard, rather. Um, but the one guy that we're a little bit surprised uh, dropping down significantly after that single buck is Red Bank Noll. Yeah, um, but he, he's still got a personal best. He's That's still got a personal best, you know, and he dropped it. He dropped down, so uh, you know that he got a personal best. Yay, great job! But you know, he's <laughs> uh, he's got to pick up the pace on that one discipline, and clearly it wasn't his strongest discipline. But you know, he's not out of it yet. And coming up next is the springboard. The problem is, is Kuhn Martin's is King Kuhn when it comes to the springboard. He is very, very good at this discipline. So that's going to be a tough man to beat. Let's take a closer look at everything you need to know about the springboard. Springboard. Springboard simulates the traditional way of felling trees, climbing up over thick roots. First, notches known as pockets are chopped into the log. Two springboards are then anchored into these pockets. The athlete then climbs up to chop through a 27 centimeter thick block of wood in the fastest time possible. And that of course means we are ready for the athletes. Let's 
take a closer look at the starting order in just a few moments. I love the way that stage looks. They're creating their own forest on stage. It's amazing. <laughs> creating the, yes, more or less. Here's the starting order. We've got uh, the duel of the brothers this time. Uh, we, we hope that they're actually going to come out together in heat number one. Well, we'll Martin <laughs> Cuvillier versus Robin Cuvillier. Nitsu Pen Terpstra takes on Rick van Drielen. In heat number three, we will get to see Martin Harms and Elko de Beer. And in heat four, it will be Redmer Knoll against Kuhn. Martins. So maybe in that direct uh, confrontation, uh, we'll see some more of Red McNall, another personal best. Well, again, in the final heat, Red McNall goes up against Kuhn Martins. Now, I have to wonder how much Red McNall is playing in his head. Ugh, I'm going up against the champion from Belgium. But he knows he's and the champion. He's very, from, very good at this he's discipline. He's the Dutch champion, yeah, yeah. yeah, and he's very good at this discipline. So there's got to be a little bit of game playing going on in his own head. So he's just got to get out of that mode and get into the springboard in his mind and really focus on what he's got to do to, to take down a guy in Kuhn Martins that's very, very strong in springboard. And uh, I think we need to focus on upcoming events just to make sure that the tension stays. Uh, here we have the competitions of 2020, which is actually not a bad number of competitions considering uh, the COVID-19. Uh, it's been busy. Those down. So, so we have been busy. You can see everything uh, video on demand. There's been some great competitions that are worth watching, uh, even if uh, you know, you've know you already seen it. I've watched some of them twice or three times. And of course, uh, 8th of November, European Trophy, and uh, 29th of November, the Individual World Championship here in Munich, uh, well, that's something you should not miss out on. Absolutely not. It's going to be fantastic. But now um, let's take another closer look at uh, some of the scenes I think Troy needs to talk to me about. goes down on the way around, but he's not giving up, and he's looking good! Anyway! Ben, ben Cumberland, a 13.06, amazing! Officially! That is the world record to beat in the new setup. The monkey is off his back! <laughs> Brayden Myers is your 2019 Steel Timber Sports World Champion! Troy, what does it take to become the Steel Timber Sports World Champion 2020? That is my question. Good wood, good cuts, and uh, a lot of luck in some cases, absolutely. But, you know, we're going to get uh, a new champion hopefully this year, and uh, we'll see how that all breaks down when we come into the end of November and uh, we have the, the individual world championship here in Munich. Very much looking forward to that. As you can see in the background, uh, the crew is working hard on getting everything set for the springboard. I mean, they've done a great job so far. It's, it's not really easy getting all those competitions in time. And uh, so far, I think they've, they've done a tremendous job. What do you say? Well, I think they've done a fantastic job. But what I like uh, a lot here is they, they were intelligent about this. There's four heats. And they've got four stands out there, so that means they they just need to change one stand when they uh, or they they just need to change the stands, uh, you know, fairly fairly quickly. Um, and they're pretty good about it. So they've been really really efficient on this particular event. Sometimes it takes a long time, and especially with the springboard, you can see that it is quite the piece of equipment out there. They basically, That's like great. I said, built a small forest on stage that the uh, guys have to set their springboards, get up and uh, and do the work, right? So that's going to be interesting to see how quickly we can get through this one because, uh, yeah, this is a very challenging discipline for sure. Well, let's give him some more time. We've got another clip coming up for you, ladies and gentlemen, right now.
Accu Power by Steel. Alleen bij Steel Dealers. Accu Power by Steel. Alleen bij Steel Dealers. Yep, some really nice pictures and we're almost set and ready to go. But we've got some hashtags for you, ladies and gentlemen. Hashtag Steel Timber Sports and, of course, my favorite hashtag for Troy. Hashtag Kiss My Ex. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Get so, involved. <laughs> yeah, get involved. You know, send us your best pictures. Uh, send us uh, your thoughts about Steel Timber Sports, about... Uh, the competition about your favorite athletes anything will do or maybe even send us some pictures of yourself being an athlete i should do one of those yeah i don't know if i could uh, pass that one <laughs> off on the bar <laughs> <laughs> well maybe you shouldn't um, uh, what about springboards uh, does everybody know everything about springboards I don't not know. Sure. Springboard's not a, sure. a pretty nuanced uh, discipline as well. I mean, we're saying that a lot about all of the disciplines, but springboard, you really need to have, I mean, you know, you got guys that are up two meters above the ground with a sharp axe in their hand. You got to make sure that that top springboard is set right. Um, and we talked a lot about in earlier events, how setting the pocket quickly, putting your springboard in at the right angle. Because if you have a springboard that's flat and you step on it, it starts to sag like this, then you don't have the power that you need to really work that block and, and, uh, or to get your next set of pockets set. So, um, you know, having the right angle, making that first pocket done quickly. So uh, optimal is a four to six hit pocket. We saw um, Sterling Hart... Oh. In Stuttgart a few years ago, Crazy. he had a three-hit pocket on the first one, a three-hit pocket on the second one, and he got the world record for springboard. So, you know, if you can get it done quickly, um, will we see a world record broken here today? I'm not sure. The way the wood's been active, um, I doubt it. But, uh, you know, beating Sterling Hart's world record is going to be difficult, but Kuhn Martins came pretty close. So he's the man to beat for this particular discipline. We'll see how uh, he fares and, and just how everything will break down during springboard here today. Because it, I mean, for me, I think it's probably the most difficult discipline from your headspace, from the physicality and the fact that you're two meters above the ground with a razor sharp axe in your hand swinging. It is a little crazy. A it is little a little, little bit little of a crazy. wiggly board <laughs> that's going to be playing games in your mind. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, understandably. Um, let's take a look at the starting order of springboards. So in heat one, Martin Cuvillier and Robin Cuvillier will take them brother duel on. In heat two, Ben Terspera and Eric van Drielen. Heat three, Martin Harms and Elko de Beren. In heat four, Red McNoll and Köhn Martins. We are ready for the Springboards competition. Let's rock and roll. All right. Keep a close eye on how these guys set their first pockets. And you can see the Cuvillier brothers getting ready to go. Uh, 39 and 37 years old. They grew up together. They're about the same as far as their weight is concerned, as their height is concerned. So, I mean, it doesn't get any more evenly matched than a couple of guys that could be twins, right? Um, so, and, and uh, you know, getting this first set of hits for the pockets is really important to make sure that you have uh, a solid position for your board. So it looks like on the left-hand side, it's Martin Cuvillier has already set his first pocket and is up getting ready to set his second pocket. Got a little bit surprised by the start of this competition here. Uh, Robin Cuvillier, uh, haven't seen if he's got that first board in yet. Yeah, now he's got that first board in and he is setting himself up on the second board. And this is where it's important to get that second board in position. He's looking like he's got a good angle because you want to be able to push off of that back foot and not depend on all of your shoulders and your arms putting the power into that block. That can get really tiring. So uh, his position is nice on the board. And as he starts to feel the board underneath him, he'll be able to, to say, OK, I've got enough support there. And both of these guys really evenly match as they get up onto the top block here. It did take Robin Cuvillier a bit longer to get up onto that top position than Martin Cuvillier, but Robin seems to have done a good job to try and catch up to his brother. So, I mean, out here, you know, no brotherly love. Martin Cuvillier on the left-hand side, Robin Cuvillier in the back on the right-hand side. And it looks like Martin Cuvillier has the distinct advantage of going deep on that first side and he'll switch to this strange angle on the back side shortly and try and get through there a quick twist of the axe. 
And now he's going to get on that, uh, there you see, switching his foot position and having the axe on the the back hits there. It's just, it's, I mean, it's a difficult place to hit from. And uh, choking up on the axe, he's got a time of 148.90. And Robin Cuvillier with a 152.46. So those are unofficial times until Bart Janssen gives a thumbs up and has the go-ahead from competition control. We'll also get those adjusted times. And by the way, that time for Robin Cuvillier is a personal best of 152.46. So the time to beat at the minute is 148.47. And the adjusted score time is 152.20 now for Robin Cuvillier. So taking a look at this Pocket set up for Martin Cuvillier. Yeah, that's about four or five hits, maybe six. I didn't count them really accurately. Gets that first board and he can see the nice angle. Gets that springiness in it and he can use that angle to his advantage as he tries to set up. Now this is Robin Cuvillier here as he gets that second pocket going. And then we, yeah, we didn't actually get to see how many hits it was on that second pocket before the board went in. But there on top, those... Last few blows by Martin Cuvillier, and uh, one more should do it here as we take a look at the slow-mo. And my count is off again. Boy, I'm really uh, batting a 1,000 today as far as that's concerned, isn't it? Yeah, good heat between those two brothers. Um, nothing groundbreaking there, to be quite honest with you, but uh, a personal best for Robin Cuvillier, so great job. And uh, there we see in the overall standings how that... Uh, shifts things around and both of them are neck and neck with each other in fifth and sixth positions at the moment. So Ben Tapstra and Rick Van Drielen will be the next heat getting ready to go. Rick Van Drielen said earlier in the interview that, uh, you know, he'll be happy if he can get a time in uh, under a minute and, uh, and change uh, or under a minute and 30. But, uh, you know, his personal best is 122. So we'll see how he does. He's got the experience over Ben Tepstra. Ben Tepstra is a bit of a lighter man, although he is tall. Uh, it could be to his advantage if he can get those boards set in a really good time and, and stable. So let's see how we do here. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So Rick Van Drielen, that's uh, about seven, eight hits. Now he gets up onto that first board, but you can see there's a bit of sag there on his board that's going down at an angle. Meanwhile, Tapstra is up on his board. It's a little bit more horizontal to the ground, so that's an advantage for Tapstra on the first board just to set that second pocket nicely. And uh, I think he's overthinking that second pocket a little bit too much. It looked good, and then he kept digging in there. He really wants to have it. A quick clear with the fingers to set his second board. Let's see what the angle looks like on the number two board. It looks very good, but Vic Rick Van Drielen is already up on top. But you can see the angle on Rick's board is also sagging a bit, and that means he's going to have to use his shoulders and arms more than he would be able to use his core strength and his hips in, in order to really put power into it. And you can also see that he's a lot closer in towards the board or towards the block on the board itself. Meanwhile, Tabstra, he's on the outside edge of his board, so he's able to use more of his hips and his upper body to swing that axe and get more drive into the axe and into the wood. And that's going to be an advantage for him. You can see he's much farther back from the wood. That gives him more power to the axe head and more swing speed as well. Rick Van Drielen's got that power, though, but you can see he's working it all from his upper body. That means he's going to be tired very quickly as he gets that axe caught in and struggles to get it out. Tapstra is already working the backside, and Rick Van Drielen has got a lot of material still on the front. Tapstra drops it in 144.36, a great time just ahead of Martin Cuvillier, and that means he moves into the top position in springboard with a personal best. Very nice job by Tapstra, and it was all down to the positioning of his springboard at the top there had just a bit better position and meanwhile Rick Van Drielen still trying to get through there now if the time runs to 225 230 that means it will be a DQ because of running out of time 
Let's just see here. Yeah. He's going to go back to the front side, but it's going to be a problem for Rick Van Drielen because he's already coming up on 2.30 here, and there it is, DQ at 2.30, time limit exceeded. He'll hear the whistle, and that is a disappointment for the veteran Rick Van Drielen. So DQ, zero points for him, and he is exhausted, taking a little bit of a siesta there on top before he climbs back down. He is disappointed, definitely, because he knows he can do better. But we've seen it today. The wood is just not behaving in the favor of the athletes, and they have to work a little extra harder in order to... Did I just say that? A little extra harder? A little extra hard in order to get through those blocks. So uh, now our stage crew will get to work on replacing all four of those stands. And let's take a look here. Rick Van Drielen. One, two, three, four... Five. Ah, uh, we don't get to see it continue, but uh, I believe he had like a six or a seven hit pocket on that first board. It was sagging a bit, and here you can see Tapstra getting up on his board. It was pretty well positioned, started to sag a little bit, but didn't get much past parallel on his first pocket. And then Rick Van Drielen, you can see his second board sags out immediately when he gets up. That pocket just was wasn't quite the way he wanted it. And that just played a role in how much power he was able to put to the block at the top. And it cost him a lot of time. And here we see the last couple of blows from Tabstra as he drops that block down. Good job by him and a personal best for Ben Tabstra with a 144.04. He's happy about that. Yeah, there you can see the disappointment in Rick Van Drielen after that whistle blew. And uh, just absolutely gutted and exhausted there. Takes it out of you, man. Takes it out of you. So springboard taps are at the top. Van Drielen with a DQ sitting in fourth place after two heats in the overall standings. Tapstra moves up ahead of Kuhn Martins and Van Drielen. So uh, there we are with the overall standings at the moment. And uh, yeah. getting interesting now yeah and it looks like fitness is more and more important uh, in this discipline in the springboards uh, we might be able to take a closer look at the fitness of ben tepstra uh it would be nice to get him because he is the fastest man so far in a close-up and troy hopefully you're gonna find out why he has been the best athlete so far yeah you can hear you hear you see that uh ben gets that first board set in Pretty nicely, uh, you know, like I said, it did sag slightly, but here, one, two, three, four, and he started to second guess himself. I said this during the heat itself, that that would have been enough right there, I think, but then he started to get a little bit deeper in. Probably was okay for him after this hit. Quick finger sweep to make sure everything is out of the way, and uh, I think that probably... Point. Yeah, I think... Uh, you know, at this at this point right here, he probably could have gone in a lot earlier. His board position would have been okay. But, you know, he got up there, and you could see he's got a nice angle on his board, and that springiness in the board helps him out because he can step back onto the back end of the board and really push off that back foot, twist his hips, and put more power into the block at the top, as which we saw from Rick Van Drielen. He was standing a lot closer to the block. He had to have his hands up higher on the axle handle in order to be able to hit the block without, uh, he just didn't have the power. He didn't have the, uh, you know, the strength in his hits in order to get through there as well as Ben Tapster did in this case. And, you know, it cost him, it cost him energy, it cost him time. And at the end he was DQ'd because he ran over time. And you can see here, you know, Ben Tapster's foot, it's, it's not quite at the very back of the board, but you know, it's really far back. And as a tall man, it gave him the advantage of being able to really swing through on each of those hits. A little skip right there, but no big deal. He got through deep on this first side, and then he didn't have to do as much work on that weird angle on the backside here as he switches his footing and then tries to get those, uh, those sharp down cut angles to drop that block as quickly as he could. But he did a great job there. I mean, you know, kudos to him. It's a personal best, and those things are improving every day. And each time that these guys get out there, they improve on their fitness. They improve on, you know, their their use of the axe and the different angles that they're they're using the axe on. So, you know, you mentioned fitness earlier. Huge, huge, huge deal here, especially 
with the springboard because there's so much going on. And then, you know, at the end, you have to be able to just keep going and keep going and keep going and, uh, and get that thing done in under the two minute 30 uh, time frame. So a great job by Tepstra to uh, be at the top of springboard so far. But there's two more heats coming and uh, the best man in Benelux is going to be in one of those two heats. Oh, uh, I, I'm sure about that. So uh, let's find out who is Kuhn Martins. Hi everyone, Kuhn Martens, reigning Belgium champion. I'm 36 years old. I started competing when I was 28 and it was an amazing adventure. by trade and I have two jobs so one part is being an arborist and the other part is teacher in metalworking. The highlight of my career would be the team race at the World Championship in Innsbruck. It was together with David Bergen, Martin and Robin Kuvely and Arno Goudsmith and for the first time I competed on a World Championship and we took the national record. The biggest setback of my career would be a torn muscle in my shoulder. It was last year. I'm still recovering from that. With a lot of exercises and good help from specialists, it will be okay. During Corona, I had some extra time, so I finished the house and I spent some more time finishing axes, saws and chains. So everything will be ready when we start competing again. Last thing I want to say, um, I'm very thankful for everyone who helped me in this amazing adventure. So stay safe and I hope to see you all soon. Accu power by steel. Alleen by steel dealers. Well, even Kuhn Martins was a rookie once. Uh, we'd love to take a closer look at our rookies now because they are the future of steel timber sports. <laughs> So we're getting ready for the heats three and four in the spring balls competition. And it looks to me that the athletes are ready. Troy, what about you? You ready, Sue? Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> I mean, uh, the last two heats, a load off for me as well. It's, uh, it's an exciting couple of heat with, uh, with Martin Harms and Elko de Beer in heat number three and then heat number four with uh, the two guys who won their respective national championships, Red Knoll going up against Kuhn Martins. And I, and I mentioned it earlier on, you know, it's that head game that uh, Red could be playing with himself, knowing that, uh, yeah, 
Kuhn Martins is such a, a strong springboard athlete, so we'll see how that breaks down when these two go head-to-head in heat number four. But before that, Martin Harms and Elko de Beer have to go at it. And yeah, they've got some okay times. I mean, uh, Martin Harms, his best time is uh, 117.32, and uh, Elko de Beer, uh, 108.97. So advantage could go to Elko de Beer. Let's see. Well, we'll find out in just a moment. All right, there's our forest again, and Martin Harms and Elko de Beer going up against each other once again. We've seen the battle earlier on in the day, and they're doing it again. So there you see their personal best, 117.32 and 108.97. I still can't wrap my head around the time from uh, Sterling Hart of 35.67. That is an incredible time. It's unreal, unreal. I mean, the... The gods had to come together on that one in order to offer good wood, good axes, and good air. Because, uh, I mean, that is just, I mean, that's going to be a, a time that's probably going to stand for a long, long, long time. Martin Harms focused on that first pocket. He is thinking four, four, four. Here we go. Okay. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Hilko de Beer struggling a little bit on his first pocket. Martin Harms has already got his pretty much uh, cut, I believe. And then Elko de Beer has got up there fairly fast now. Actually, I'm hearing the axe from Martin Harms in the background. Elko de Beer is working on his second pocket now. This is where precision and a little bit of power, that's, uh, that's about six, seven hits right there for Elko de Beers. Martin Harms now setting his second pocket. Elko de Beers gingerly testing his springboard, but it looks very good for him up there as he's got a nice stand and hands started working on the top block. Martin Harms now up on top of his board. Also looks like he's got a decent angle. Back foot pushes down, and he gets going on that top block now. And we already have passed the 106 mark, so uh, again, not seeing any personal best dropping here in springboard for these two gentlemen. At least not at this point. Personal best for Martin Harms is 117, but there, that's done and dusted. And again, let's not forget, 2 minutes 30 is the cutoff for getting this event done for this particular discipline. Martin Harms up on top. Now Ilko de Beer is working on the backside of his block. That axe is getting stuck in there. Every hit it seems like. And now two more hits should do it. There we go. It's down and out. And Elko de Beer with a 143-32. Unbelievably has the fastest time. Martin Harms yelling at his log there as... Uh, He's uh, gotten a bit of a weird angle and uh, has started to splinter that wood out and not slabbing it away, and uh, he's really struggling to get that thing through. He's got to get it done in 25 seconds, and here we go. Now he's going to finally get it through as he lops it off from the front side. Fourth place for him in the overall standings after he's got fifth place in springboard. All right, a lot of discussion going on on stage as we take a look back at the slow-mos here really quickly. So this is Elko De Beers right there. Took him a bit of time to get that first pocket cut, but nicely cut and a little skip right there by Martin Harms. That's six hits right there. Oh, that was a good pocket for Martin Harms as he got up and uh, went to set his second pocket. And uh, where Martin Harms struggled up at the top was where Elko de Beers was definitely uh, having an advantageous time is right there on that backside cut. Elko looking good. Martin Harms 
just had a weird angle and he had to go back to the front side and finally lop this thing off and hey boy did he ever that thing did the backflip on the way down and you could see he was totally <coughs> unhappy with the time there so De Beer with the fast time of 142.99 harms with a 208.26 and uh, that will take a look at the overall standings now De Beers stays on top Kuhn Martin's in second place he hasn't done his springboard yet and Knoll is uh, down in sixth place, and he will be competing in heat number four with Kern Martins, Red Mark Knoll. And remember, this is a discipline that Kern Martins absolutely is strong in. Look at the difference in time there. Personal best for Kern Martins, 56.32. Personal best for Red Mark Knoll, 2.30.66. Remembering that in this competition, 2.30 is the cutoff. So he has got to, I mean, he needs to be training in the off season in order to be ready for this particular discipline. And most of these guys, if they know they have a weak discipline, they'll spend a lot of time training on that discipline to make sure that they can at least keep up. But Red McNall has his work cut out for him here in this competition against Kern Martins. Kuhn actually uh, does a lot of, of mental and training ready. with one Stand of Belgium's best timber. mental Three, training coaches, two, also works one, with the Belgian go. national cycling team. So this is something that uh, helps him focus on everything. Kuhn on the far side. And oh, great pocket by Knoll as he gets up just ahead of Kuhn Martin. He's obviously been working this. So it's going to come down to that top block, I believe. Kuhn Martins now setting up his second pocket. Oh, and look at this. Ha, ha, ha. Red McNoll with the second board in place already ahead of Kuhn Martins. Could it be that we have an upset here? Kuhn Martins, good position on top, though. This is where he excels. Oh, wait a minute. There's a problem with Knoll's second pocket. He's got to go back, take the board out, reset the pocket. He's in big trouble here now as Kuhn Martins is already up top. That is unfortunate. There was a big problem. There was obviously something that caught there that wasn't allowing the board to stay stable. Kuhn Martins already on the backside of his board. Not going to get a personal best here, but it's going to be a great time. And I imagine that he is going to definitely take over the top spot with a 10147. Yeah, no doubt about it. Holy smokes, folks. That was a good one from Kuhn Martins, and I thought for sure Red McNoll was going to cause problems for him, but right now he is just having problems of his own with that second pocket. He didn't clear it out properly. The, the board is, is slipping too much, and he's already at the 125 mark. He needs to be rock and roll up top there if he wants to get done in the time of 2.30. Kuhn Martin's waiting on top of his boards as now he comes down, and Red McNoll working to try and get through that. Now passing, almost the passing the 45, 145. Yeah, he's got 45 seconds left now. If he wants to get through that block, it's going to be tough for him. You could see that board sagging a bit. He didn't get the angle on it that I think he wanted. It was unfortunate because I thought for sure that he was going to be up on top of that second board quickly. 25 seconds to go now. Can he do it? He's almost there. He needs to get the points. He can't afford a DQ. Good job. 213.53, a personal best for Red McNoll. And I think he just overthought that second pocket a bit too much. I hope we can get replay and slow-mo on setting that second pocket and what happened to make him take his board back out and start re-hammering away at that pocket. So on one side, it's disappointing because he was there, but then stepped back. On the other side, though, it's a personal best for Knoll. So let's take a look here. This first pocket looked really good. He was set quickly. I think that was a maximum a six-hit pocket. The angle was great. Kuhn Martins, on the other hand, man, he was just fire on this one. Sets that board, gets up there, and starts working on the top. As we go back over here, this was the... 
the first set or the second set? No, this is when he actually... No, no, you could see that board start slipping out. This is when he came back down, had to take the board out and then reset the pocket. And that's where everything went south for Red Marknoll. So regardless, he's got himself a personal best there. And that's where he finally set the board and got up on top. And luckily, he managed to get that top block off under the 2 minutes 30. And with the adjustments, we're at 2.13.43 for him. But uh, Kuhn Martins, wow, 101.24. So that means Kuhn Martins wins yet another discipline. He's got himself 65 points. That's 15 points ahead of De Beer, Elko De Beer, in the overall standing. So... Uh, yeah, it could be a real nice battle between these two guys as we head towards Hot Saw, which is the difference maker as we know, Marcus. Absolutely. And I think Kuhn Martins will be hard to beat today. But let's take a look at Red McNoll. I mean, it was his fourth personal best in the fourth discipline and he yeah. started off so well. It looked amazingly good. I mean, he was faster than, uh, than Kuhn Martins and then... That second pocket. Yeah, setting that second pocket, he was definitely quicker or at least on pace with Kuhn Martins. But then you saw when he got up there and he started taking that first hit or at least tried to get the axe out, the 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 springboard started to sag and you could see coming down and down and down. And and when you know you get past a certain point, that thing's gonna slip out, and that's the last thing you need when you're two meters up in the air. We mentioned it earlier. Um but, you know, you don't want to come down with a, a sharp axe in your hand from two meters up and uh have to deal with the consequences. So Better that he took the time, reset the pocket, put the board back in again, and got up top. Yeah, it was a personal best, not the best time overall. But, you know, he didn't give up. He kept fighting, and four personal bests in a row. That's pretty awesome for, uh, for Redmer. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. And I think Davey is uh, already on site, uh, getting ready with an interview partner. So hopefully uh, we can hear some expert calls from down on the field of play on the big stage of Steel Timber Sports Benelux National Championships. And I honestly wonder who Davy has uh, found, but uh, obviously they are not quite ready yet, which is not a problem. Troy will just go analyzing that fastest run that we've seen in this competition. And that is, of course, uh, the favorite, Kuhn Martins. Let's take another close look at the way he got this best time. Yeah, so if we look back at the slow-mos here from Kuhn Martins, he uh, set this first pocket, two hits, three, four... Those down angle five, six, seven, eight, nine, and uh, yeah, okay. So not the fastest pocket. Oh, excuse me, that's not Coon Martins. That's Elko de Beer. Alrighty then. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's <laughs> but that was not too bad what he showed us. No, not bad at all. I mean, uh, the the first set of pockets, uh, you could see him chipping out some uh, some material there. Uh, finally. Cleans that area out a bit. and uh, Is that something that Red McNall forgot to do? Just to clean out the material? It could have been uh, that he just, you know, all he needed to do was sweep out some of that material. Because if, if loose material gets caught underneath the, the toe of the board before the hook gets in, then that can, you know, wiggle around and move and help the, the board will start to slip out. Uh, so, you know, sometimes it's just inexperience. Sometimes it's uh, overthinking it too much and... Oh, during the competition, yeah. things like these happen. Yeah. yeah, and this is what I mentioned to you earlier. He's getting inside his own head a little bit too no, much, knowing that he's game, going yeah. up against, uh, you know, Kuhn Martins. And pff, it happens, right? Uh, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of, of one little hit there. You could see. Uh, I wish you guys could, could, could see Troy now. He's showing me all the moves, <laughs> especially before when he did the springboard, you know, using the spring. Maybe we can get uh, a camera no, on, on Troy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You should show everybody. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. that, 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 was, that was really awesome. You know, he's getting all the power down. and, and all the, But uh, you're lucky, Troy, because <laughs> I've just been Saved told. by the bell. <laughs> yeah. Davey is ready, is ready with an interview partner. So uh, let's go down into the Steel Timber Sports Arena. Springboard, one of the most difficult disciplines in steel timber sports because all skills come together. Martin Sterling Hart does it in three hit pockets. Sterling Hart has ongeveer three hits per pocket. Can you hear it? Ah, they're making a lot of noise. 
with the hot saw. Okay, yeah. it's okay right now. <laughs> so Sterling Hart does it in three hit pockets. Uh, Sterling Hart heeft ongeveer een uh, drie hits nodig voor een pocket te maken. Ja. Hoeveel heb jij er nodig? Uh, als ik in vorm ben, vier, heel soms vier, meestal vijf, tussen de vijf en de tien. Dan ben ik al heel tevreden. Okay. Maar dat moet echt heel hard trainen. Ja, yeah, so Maarten needs uh, five hit pockets uh, to stick his uh, springboard right into that wood. Uh, what do you think of your performance? Uh, what heb je, uh, hoe heb je jouw uh, oefening ervaren? Uh, vandaag ging eigenlijk heel goed, ondanks dat ik samen met mijn broer dezelfde springboards... We hebben samen dezelfde springboards, dus moest ik springboards lenen. En dat is altijd even wennen. Ah, oké. Okay. So normally he uses the springboard of his brother, uh, Robin Cuvelier. But now, uh, yeah, they had uh, to do the same uh, at the same time. So that was a little bit difficult. And he lent the springboards of Martin Harms. Ja, nee, dat Martin Harms. Always nice that these guys are helping you, of course. Ja. So uh, now uh, it's done for you. Um, and you have a little secret to uh, conceal... Uh, je hebt nog een klein uh, geheimpje dat jij wilt uh, ja, onthullen hier uh, op Stil Timmersports, want je hebt blijkbaar iets gefotografeerd dat heel zeldzaam is. Ja, ik heb de eerste links van België gefotografeerd en ook een wolf. Uh, ja, dat is een bijkomende hobby. Ah. Uh, deze is ook nog altijd een van mijn betere hobby's. Dus, ah, ja, uh, okay. Doe erin verder. So, uh, Maarten has a little secret to conceal. Uh, he managed to take a picture of the wolf of Belgium and of a lynx in Belgium. So that's really rare and uh, he's one master photographer. So uh, he did really a splendid job out there. All right, Marcus and Troy, thank you very much. And uh, back to you guys. Well, thanks very much, uh, Davy. And uh, talking about a good photographer, I mean, the World Trophy, that's a good place to go and uh, take some uh, brilliant pictures. There should have been a World Trophy at the beginning of the year, but of course it was postponed due to the COVID-19 restrictions. But we're still going to take a closer look because hopefully we can return next year and do exactly the same just uh, with one year in between, which we'll just uh, forget. But here are the pictures. Bij Steel. Alleen bij Steel Dealers. Accu Power bij Steel. Alleen bij Steel Dealers. So we're very much looking forward to the Champions Trophy taking place in 2021, but. We've still got a European trophy coming up this year in November. Take a closer look. Here you can see all the dates on the 8th of November. The European trophy live from Munich. And of course, later on the same month on the 29th, the individual world championship also taking place in Munich. We'll show you everything live so you're not going to miss out on anything. And hopefully in 2021, we'll be back live with audience. Troy, that's something uh, everybody's missing and uh, we're all very much looking forward to. Yeah, fingers crossed for uh, having our audiences back and, uh, you know, being able to be live at each of these different event locations. But, uh, you know, it is what it is now. We have to take care of our families. We have to take care of our communities and uh, work together with each other in order to, you know, stop the uh, the tide of this COVID thing. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so, so... So it's time to take care of the bracket now. Yep, let's yeah. take care of the bracket. So let's take a close look at the movement. I see that win with Cohen Martins uh, put him back in the overall lead with 65 points, but Elko De Beer is only 15 points back. So uh, the make or break discipline, the hot saw is coming up, and uh, that's the one that could be the tell-all 
for who's going to win this. So there is still a chance for Elko De Beer and Ben Terpstra to uh, maybe do some damage here. But, uh, you know, again, we're talking about these finicky hot saws. So, yeah. Uh, you've mentioned it. Uh, the hot saw is the maker or the breaker. Anything and everything can happen in this discipline and everything you want to know about the hot saw. Well, we'll show you right now. This is the one and Looking at the individual the competition, competition, most of the time it's the hot saw that makes the difference. Yeah, probably the most important event, but uh, yeah, also the most frustrating. These saws are so incredibly powerful and dangerous. Usually the hot saw is uh, the slider. Stand to your timber. Hot saw. Hot saw. Like I can't describe to you when we're out there under pressure. Saw starts well. First disc looks solid. The cut is good. You know, you're always ending the competition on a hot saw, so you know where you're going to be at when you finish. So you're either at a bureau big high or just is what it is. Nice, clean cuts. Easy and relaxed. The hot saw is for me the geilste discipline in the world. <laughs> Five, six, eight. Robert Ecker, three on the deck. Once the competition comes, anything can happen. Oh no, a false start by Sterling Hart. What a disaster. Yeah, it was a disappointment for me. I, uh, happens though, it's part of competing. I saw there was three good discs there, but then they let that nose come right up underneath the crossover line. Fortunately, a disqualification. It all relies on the hot saw. If you have bad luck or if you did, did wrong, it's, it's poor. Just oh, there. No. oh my goodness. What an absolute disaster. The chain came off. I was not disappointed because everybody see that I can be with the guys in front. Yeah, it's the make or break event, you know. I think you love it and you hate it. Try to make three good cuts and no disqualification. The hot saw is where it's all one. So that's the best event. Well, you either love it or you hate it. But how does the format work? We'll show you now. Hot saw. For the hot saw, power saws are called into action and the athletes have a space of 15 centimeters to cut three complete discs off a 46 centimeter thick wooden block. Jumping the start or cutting over the line will result in a disqualification. These custom, handmade, race-tuned machines are built for maximum power and precision and to cut the wood as fast as possible in a competition. They are built with a 60 to 80 horsepower single-cylinder two-stroke engine, often taken from a snowmobile or high-powered motorbike. The hot saw can weigh up to 30 kilograms and its chain rotates at over 250 kilometers an hour. The cost of a competition hot saw used in steel timber sports is upward of 6,000 euros. Six athletes left for this grande finale of the steel timber sports national Benelux championships. Let's find out uh, the running order and the starting order is heat number one with Rick van Drieland and Redmer Knoll. In heat number two, Martin Harms and Ben Terstra will take themselves on. And in heat number three, come Elko de Bear and Kuhn Martins. We are ready to rumble. Troy, let's do the hot saw. Yeah, let's do it. And something unusual for the hot saw is we have head-to-head -head heats this time. Normally, these guys are out on stage on their own. Uh, but uh, in this case, we'll see them out on stage going head-to-head. -head. Now, you can see Rick Van Driel, and this is a discipline that he really likes. His personal best is 697. That's not that far off the world wow. record held by Dirk Brown of 520. So if you can imagine, he just needs to have three good cuts, and he could well take a world record here today. Yeah, we can guess and we can wish, but uh, we'll see. Um, he's going up against uh, Red Marknoll. You know, the, uh, the young guy, he's been great. He's the uh, Dutch national champion um, and now competing here. He's had a bunch of personal bests today, so he really can't be disappointed with how things went for him today, and he's in the mix for this hot saw discipline. So uh, here's an opportunity for him to uh, show and prove. And now what they'll do is they'll start up the saws. 
It's a uh, warm start, we'll call it, so they get to warm up the saw, but you can't overdo it. You have to make sure it doesn't get too hot. Then they'll shut the saws down, rewrap that starting cord, and get everything ready to go. And then it's all in one smooth motion. They have to draw that line out, get the saw going, do a cut down, a cut up, and a cut down within 15 centimeters, as you heard in the description. And then once that's all done and taken care of, we have a time. And of course, you can't cut outside the line. You can't cut through a disc. You have to be precise. So, you know, nothing really heavy duty going on here. (laughs) (laughs) This is where it's about these finicky, finicky saws. So you can see two different saw blade types here on the uh, right hand side by Red McNally's got the straighter Ready. steel blade, and Stand on the left side, Rick timber. Van Drielen has a little bit more Three, of a belly-up blade, two, so we'll see go. how this goes. Great start from Rick Van Drielen. Oh, yeah, 584, national record from Rick Van Drielen. That is fantastic, and he's going to be happy about that. Red McNall struggling. And uh, he has to restart that saw. His time is still running. I don't think he got three on the floor yet. But wow, what a time by Rick Van Drielen. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full, sir. Or should I say three discs on the floor, sir? Oh, yeah. Red McNoll. Trouble in paradise over there as he has to restart that saw to get his final cut. And there it is, three on the floor now, but his time, 42-25. That is unfortunate for the young man. What a great time for Rick Van Drielen, though. This is definitely a discipline that he likes. And now it is a new national record. How happy is he? 5.77 seconds after adjustment. So that's only, only, let me check it out here. The world record held by Dirk Brown, 520. That's only 57 hundredths of a second slower than the world record. Rick Van Drielen is on his way. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Not bad at all. Let's see what happened here with Red Merrill. So he had a good first cut there, it looks like. But you could see Rick Van Drielen was done with his cuts. Well, Red Merknoll was still working on his first cut. Watch this again. Rick Van Drielen, one, two, good second cut, was nice and thin. He got that third one on the floor, and he went over to check that line, and he was like, yes, I can celebrate after that one, absolutely. So a new national record gets thrown out the window by Rick Van Drielen, or the national record gets thrown out the window by Rick Van Drielen with a great time of 5.77. And that means Rick Van Drielen now moves into second in the overall with 56 points. He does have the potential to win this thing if... Well, no, actually, can't happen. 65, he's up. He's up. <laughs> yeah, 65 points is going to be a tough one to beat for Rick Van Drielen. But he is, in, he is in heaven right now with the new national record, so he'll be happy about that. All right, Martin Harms and Ben Tebstra. Couple of good times there as well. 686 and 739. All right, everything is set up for heat number two here. There's a beast. Look at that machine right there. I think that's that Rotax motor. I'm not sure. That big fat blade on there. Heavy, heavy machines. And you have to be precise when you get those things started. All the moving parts just shaking and baking. Ben Terpstra. You also notice that when okay, Terpstra puts his saw down on the well, ground, his saw. blade is more or less parallel with the ground. If you look to the left-hand side, Martin Harms, his blade is at an angle of about 20 degrees upwards. So theoretically speaking, getting that blade up and into position is going to be faster for 
Martin Harms stand for Ben Tapstra. Let's see if that's actually the case as these two guys get themselves set up for competition. Warmed, saws are warmed up. They have to rewrap their starts and hook up everything to get ready to go. Second. Personal best for Martin Harms, 686. Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Oh, yes, another record goes out the window. Both of these guys with personal best, and we've got another national record going down, this time for the Dutch side. Fantastic. So we got two national records. No, that's uh, that was a that was a typo on screen for me. That's uh, can't be right because the national record is owned by Rick Van Drielen at five seven seven. Martin Harms with a six five three. That'll be a personal best, not a national record, because his personal best prior was a six eight six. So a six five three now for Martin Harms. Ben Tapstra. He's got a personal best today, 721. So some improvements there for both these guys. Look how those saws dig into that wood as they grind through there. Great job by both these guys. All cuts are good, as we heard. So uh, those scores will count as we move towards our last pairing of Elko, De Beer, and Kuhn Martin. Ben Tapstra, nice and solid there. And you know there's going to be improvement on his side as well. So, yeah, there we go. Martin Harms with a personal best of 6.53. Ben Tapstra also with a personal best of 7.21. In the overall, Kern Martins stays on top with 65 points. Martin Harms sitting in second place with 58. Tapstra with 57. So Elko De Beer is really the only guy that can do any damage, and he's going to be going up against Cohen Martins in heat number three. And again, it's those head games that could start to play a role here between these two guys, knowing that uh, one mistake could be the difference maker between winning it and losing it. 18 points up for grabs, by the way. So last inspections by Bart Janssen of the machine of Elko de Beer. Kuhn Martins, again, the technician, marking up and measuring to the centimeter to make sure that he is set and has everything clear in his mind. So the only thing that can really prevent Kuhn Martins from taking the championship here today is a DQ, which is entirely possible with these machines. If they don't want to play, they will pout and kick you out. <laughs> if Elko de Beers has the fastest time, so if he beats 577... He'll get the 18 points, and Kuhn Martins would get zero points for a DQ. That means okay, gentlemen. Elko de Beers would have 68 points, and Kuhn Martins 65. But it's all about down to the action. Here we go. Oh, the tension mounts. 5.77 the time to beat. 
Will either of these guys be able to do that? Uh, It's going to be a tough one. Rick Van Drielen with a fantastic hot saw today. A look through the protective glass at Martin, or Elko de Beer, excuse me, and there we see Kern Martins with all of his mental preparation. Here we go, hands on the wood. Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Oh no, here we go. Cohen Martin's having problems with his saw. Elko de Beer. Oh, he's got a half cut there. He's cut outside the disc. He's going to need to go back and recut this. This is a disastrous situation for both of these guys. But Cohen Martin's gets through in... 20.78 and it'll go to beer in 17.43. <laughs> Unbelievably, that's fifth place for Kuhn Martins for the hot saw, but that still means he's going to get enough points because it looks like all the cookies were good, even though he had to go back and restart that saw. And assuming that uh, everything comes out okay, oh no, we've got a DQ on stand one for Elko de Beer. So it uh, flipped around a DQ for Elko de Beers, and that means Kuhn Martin, if all three cookies are good and no line is cut, we have thumbs up from Bart Janssen. That means Kuhn Martin is your Benelux champion 2020. Wow. What a crazy heat that was. Totally unexpected, but we said it. Unreal. Anything can happen with hot sauce. It is the make or break discipline. <laughs> I was completely losing it. This is, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. And of course, uh, if we get to the final score now, everything has changed. And uh, Kern Martins, of course, made it. But uh, Martin Harms in, in, in silver and Ben Tespera taking bronze. That's a bit of a surprise. Uh, but uh, yeah, both of these athletes, as you can see now in the... In the, in the slow-mo, I mean, yeah. having troubles. And Kuhn Martins was calm and collected as he put that saw down, re-wrapped it, and you can see here, Elko de Beers had a great first cookie. I mean, oh. oh, right there was the problem. It was too thin, and then on his way back up, he wanted to readjust so he doesn't cut the cookie that's on the floor, not realizing that it wasn't complete. Then he had to go reset, cut a thick one to make sure that he was safe, and then go back and cut another one and that killed his time, but he didn't pay attention to that first cookie mm. or that uh, the first cookie, which was cut outside. So it wasn't a complete cookie, unfortunately. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> An incomplete cookie for El de Beers, a DQ. That's meaning zero points. Kuhn Martins with uh, not the best time of 20.80 after adjustment, but still enough for nine points. And that means 74 points for the win with Martin Harms sitting in second place with 58 points and just one point behind him in the bronze medal position, Ben Terpstra. <laughs> a very strong performance by the team from the Netherlands, but uh, the Benelux champion is Belgian. It's Kuhn Martins, and that performance was more than impressive. And just like Troy said, he kept his calm. Everything started off really bad in the hot zone, in the make and breaker event, but he kept his calm. He went back down, and he... Did that really, really well. But uh, Mark <laughs> Arms is uh, the one that had the fastest time, and that's uh, the analysis that we still need to do because we want to see how he can compete in the hot so the best way possible. And that was uh, this man today. So there we see uh, Rick Van Drielen, just uh, a couple of fat cookies actually, and we always say thin to win and. This is where, right here, he goes over immediately and checks to make sure that he wasn't over the line, saw that he was safe, even though he had basically used up the entire 15 centimeters of that block in order to get that great time. And when it was readjusted to 577, you knew he had a new national championship. Or a new national uh, record, excuse me, not national championship. So, yeah, Rick Van Drielen, a great hot saw. That was, uh, you know, the make or break for him, and and he made it with the fastest time of the day, 5.77 after adjustment, officially making a new national record. So big congratulations to him, and uh, he can work from that point up, I think. So here's the overall standing again. Kuhn Martin's on top with 74 points, and you could see 
He won that first underhand chop. Uh, wasn't so great in the uh, stock saw, but then the in the single buck or the standing block chop, excuse me, uh, he won that one. And then standing block and uh, springboard as well, taking the full points home there. So there was really no stopping Coon Martins, who was the favorite today. Martin Harms, great job by him, though, coming in second place. And, of course, Ben Tepstra, surprise in third place in the bronze medal position, Marcus. Oh, a big surprise for me, but no surprise uh, with the new and old Benelux champion. And from what I've heard, Davey, our uh, field reporter, has the champion in front of his microphone. And we want to, of course, hear what he has to say to this glorious victory. Kuhn Martens, what a thrilling final. What went wrong with the hot saw? Um, it's very simple for my hot saw. The lady has to be very, very hot. When the weather is like wet, like this, like with rain and everything, I know there must be a lot of heat in it to get it started up like really smooth and it was not heat enough. So, and another thing, I had to pull harder. That's also one thing. Don't always blame the saw. So it's also my part of it. Benelux champion 2020, uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very happy that I can take the trophy again back to Belgium. So um, I'm very pleased. I won all disciplines without a motor, like not a stock saw, not a hot saw. So I'm happy with what I did. When you look back at this competition, what are the things to learn? Uh, are there several things that can be managed better? Uh, there's always something in a competition that can be managed better. So like, like a little bit more axe hanging out or just little things that maybe make a better difference or a bigger difference next time. But it was good enough for this competition, but I will try to do it better next year for sure. Yeah, of course, but you have the support of your wife, your family, you, you have a psychologist. Uh, yeah, you, you, you've got a whole team around you. It's, um, I'm very happy that I have a real team uh, around me, like my wife, it was like a really roller coaster this week, like of emotions. She talked me through, she st stood by me, made my, me, for me like healthy dinners, supported me, and then also like the team, like Media Loop is sponsoring me, my everything, everyone that is supporting me, I want to say a very big thank you, because with you guys, and especially my wife, this life was not possible for me. So, thank you very much. Okay, so now you are going to the individual uh, world championship. Uh, what's the perspective there? Uh, I'm going to do my best um, and enjoy as much as I can because there were not a lot of competitions going on this season with the COVID. I'm very happy that like, still Benelux organized one competition. You see other athletes again. You see other countries also competing behind closed doors, but it's good that we can do what we love to do, and that is sewing and shopping wood. All right, and with these last words, I will thank you, uh, thank you very, very much, Kuhn, and uh, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, our national pride, Kuhn Martens. Thank you very much, thank you very much. A very relaxed and happy champion, he deserved it. What do you say, Troy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like he said in the interview, winning all three of the non-motor related uh, disciplines. And uh, I mean, clearly, you know, stock saw and hot saw aren't his strong disciplines, but uh, he, he pulled through. He was calm with the hot saw, as we saw, restarting the saw, getting three complete cookies. So that was a difference maker. And all he really had to do was get three cookies on the floor complete. And uh, he would have had enough points to take down the title no matter what. So it's time to take a look at the final lists and the final standings. In position 14, Arno Gutsmet. Here's the overall standing for everyone. Congratulations to Florent van Remdonk. With the 13th position in 12, Bert Berners. 11, François Lamrecht. 10, Eugene Gerdes. In 9, Edwin Dost. Position 8 goes to Robin Cuvelier, 7 to Martin Cuvelier, sharing uh, number 6 in this competition, Redmer Knoll, 5, Elko de Beer, and position 4 goes to Rick van Drielen. So it's time 
for the top three ladies and gentlemen. And we're very much looking forward to the winner's ceremony that's going to start in just a few moments. Oh, there we can see the trophies, Troy. Yeah, we commented on these earlier on. They're very cool. I wouldn't mind having one of those on my mantle. Actually, I wouldn't mind having a mantle. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, I wouldn't either. So everybody's getting ready for the big winner's ceremony. But, but that, that was a crazy competition. I really enjoyed watching that with, with all that drama at the yeah. end. And, and still you got a, a, a man who deserves to win. I mean, uh, Kuhn Martins from the very beginning showed us that he is wanting to win this. His preparation from what we've heard must have been almost perfect. And yeah, he, he, he did what he had to do on the day. And uh, I, I think he's a... He's a true champion. And I don't recall ever having a competition where there have been so many disqualifications um, because of, you know, minor stuff. And that just says, you know, that the, the judging criteria are very, very difficult for these athletes. So there's mm. no messing around, you know, and uh, they want to make sure that it's a fair competition for everybody. And they're looking at just the smallest nuances. And, uh, it, you know, it could be cutting over a line by like a millimeter and that's a disqualification as we saw earlier on in the underhand shop and yeah that, that's what Kern Martin said uh, at the beginning of the competition it's not to make any stupid mistakes it's about and the mistakes and it looks like uh, we can call in the bronze medalist here at the Steel Timber Sports Benelux Championships Ben Terstra. I can already hear the music. And hopefully very soon we'll see the bronze medalists. Ben Terstra. Proceed into the arena to take his position. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the medal ceremony of the Benelux Championship 2020. Third position, third place and winner of the bronze trophy, here is Ben Terpstra. He had a great competition, Troy. All right, Ben. Didn't expect him. Necessarily with to, 57 to points, so Ben Terpstra for the Netherlands, and he gets the trophy out of the hands of Nina. Considering he ended up very happy in, uh, with his trophy at the Dutch Cup, this is a great place. second place with 58 points. Martin Harms from the Netherlands with a smile on his face thumbs up for Martin Harms and a little fist from his team colleague Ben Terpstra <laughs> and here's Nina with the silver silver trophy Almost number one, she says. All right, first place, ladies and gentlemen, the champion of the Benelux Championship 2020, Kuhn Martens from Belgium. All right, Kuhn, well done. With 74 points. He wins the gold trophy. And a fist in the air. Number one, that's me. <laughs> Fee above his head. Kurt Martens, Benelux champion 2020. Congratulations. And John Bosmans, project lead at Still Timber Sports, 
with the pruning machine, and here comes the national anthem of Belgium. All right, thank you all for watching this live stream and uh, we'll be back uh, in uh, half an hour or an hour with the other uh, live stream for the Team Cup challenges. So uh, let's watch this.